now. It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. Hello and welcome. He is Gary McNamara. I'm Eric Harley as we begin a Monday. <laughs> Gary, how are you? <laughs> well, busy. <laughs> Nothing going on. I don't know. What are you? Uh, not much going on at all. I, tidying I, up around the studio. <laughs> little dusting in the break room. Other than that, nothing is going on. Absolutely nothing right. is happening in the world. We got, got the pledge out and uh, yeah. you know, did some uh, yeah, did some work. But uh, yeah, yeah still interesting weekend. Good to have you back. Good it's to good to back. be back. Um, I, I said, uh, you know, I, I was saying that, uh, and this we had a lot of news broke over the weekend, but yeah. uh, one of the things i said on friday was i'm just going to sit back for the first 90 minutes and let eric talk when he gets back <laughs> well i wish i had the energy to do that <laughs> after super rigs by the way shell road Tell super rigs uh the 41st annual and my 23rd year uh wow i've been i've been i've judged more than half of them that's uh, amazing uh and i think and i want to thank them uh shell road Tell has been a, a great sponsor of this uh program for longer than i've been on the program and uh, we saw some great trucks out there, but also um, it, it, it was just a, a real reminder. I mean, it's it's it, it, that the trucking industry right now is just going through such a hardship in terms of the trucking economy. And uh, if you follow our, our podcast that we do, uh, The Extra Mile, um, you can find it at RedEyeRadioShow.com. We were talking to Mercer Transportation recently about what's going on. And, and, and drivers know this. I, I don't have to tell this to the trucking industry. They know it best. Um, the rates have just, uh, I mean, plummeted. And, you know, when I noticed the diesel in Texas, I was filling up uh, on I-35 north of Dallas, and I was putting in unleaded. Uh, this goes back a couple of weeks for three twenty nine a gallon, and diesel was three oh nine. It hasn't been that way. There hasn't been that that price inversion in a long time because when in two thousand six uh, they came out with ultra low sulfur diesel as a mandate for the two two thousand seven engines, uh, it became more expensive to process that diesel, and so diesel. Uh, shot up above unleaded. I mean, forever it was it was lower than the cost of unleaded, and so then since 2000, the end of 2006, the mandate kicked in in August of uh, 06, and then after that it went up and up and up and up. And drivers know that as well. But now we've seen this glut on supply. A number of issues have uh, caused that, but the biggest of which is the trucking economy and and. I ran into some folks that have been owner operators. They've been running their own business then, and now uh, they are working as company drivers. And there's absolutely zero wrong with that. It, it's just that imagine if you're uh, you you have your own authority, uh, if you have your own shop, uh, you have your own business, and then all of a sudden you've got to sell it and go to work for uh, someone else. That's that is a change. It definitely is a change. Uh, those drivers that I talk to that are in that position are very grateful uh, for having the opportunity to work for companies. And it will come back. The trucking economy will come back because it has to, because otherwise we're going to forget COVID. If trucking is done, if nobody can deliver what we need, it is, it, it, it is so far beyond, so far worse than COVID, it, you know, aside from, uh, of course, the, the effects of COVID on human beings. I'm talking about the delivery infrastructure, but it would also be an effect on human lives because everything, my dad delivered pharmaceutical uh, uh, supplies and medicines uh, in his career as a trucker after his military career. So everything moves on a truck at some point and we would be absolutely doomed as a nation without America's truck drivers and, and, it makes my heart break. It, it does watching them go through this. And I've done this for decades and I've seen it before. We've gone through it before. Uh, you know, the, the recession hit pretty hard in trucking. But a lot of times trucking has their, 
I don't I don't know if you call this a recession. I mean, this this is about as close to a, uh, you know, for rates as depression territory um, as you can get. And, and that's there's some hyperbole in that. And, and, you know, I want to be clear about that, but it feels like a depression when that return happens. It's it's going to I think it's going to be a fairly um, a rapid return, relatively speaking, uh, because there are some dynamics that are a lot more resilient and it's not, it isn't the end of the world, but there is no doubt that, that many trucking operations are going through some, some hardships right now. Uh, great show, great turnout, um, had never been to Gillette, Wyoming, uh, beautiful country, met some locals there. Uh, one driver who competed in, in fact, one, uh, they, he, uh, used to rodeo back in the day and now he drives truck and his family, they're homesteaders there in Wyoming. That was an interesting story. Uh, so that goes back, uh, you know, of course, uh, generations, many generations, uh, but meeting some great folks, the local folks there in Gillette and in Wyoming were great. Um, and, uh, they were great hosts to us and, uh, you know, it was, the, the turnout was a little bit lower than usual, but the trucking economy again being down. Uh, if you do have loads, you're going to keep moving, and if you don't, then uh, maybe you skip a show or two. And uh, we're just going to welcome everybody back next time around. Uh, but uh, you know, when I'm when I'm away on a show like that, I'm working, and it is almost around the clock. I mean, we're working from sunup to to way past sundown on on shows like that, and it's great work. Uh, but with so much going on you know, in the world. I mean, the Biden story broke, uh, the source story that came out, that was what Thursday that it broke. And then the, the indictments came down on Trump, you know, so these are all the things that you and I have just mm-hmm. been, you know, these shoes we've been w- waiting, uh, uh, for them to drop for a while now. And of course they hit while I'm out of town, uh, in traveling. And, you know, the thing on the indictment, you and I are very clear when, when stories come out and they're source stories. This one has, obviously, a lot more credibility. It wasn't like a, a brand new story, right? Like nothing had ever happened with the, you know, a Hunter laptop or nothing, and then it just out of the blue, a story like that hit, and it was a brand new story. Then I would say, okay, let's wait and see, you know, who these sources are. But now this source story jives with with exactly everything that was already in play so it's not a brand new story it's part of an existing story you you said indictment you mean trump indictment but this is the this is the biden thing right right okay because i just want to make clear yeah yeah yeah, yeah, right yeah yeah no i was talking trump trump indictment the all the stories i was covering all the stories right um but on the biden thing this is not you know with with Hunter Biden's laptop, you know, already in everything we've already learned since then. The point is, is when you hear these stories of the of the bribe and the source story of the of the bribe and the, you know, five million dollars and all of that. Ten um, million. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> ten million. Now. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing. In my mind. I always had a much higher number, like a 50 million for the entire family. My question would be, well, could this demonstrate now <laughs> we got to we got to separate the parts of that entire deal with what did the family get what did joe get what is the bribe and what is the payoff to the family because then you got to wonder okay the quid pro quo the flow of the money and in my mind I've always had a, a uh, and, and it's just a number that was there roughly 50 million dollar number for some reason is and, that total or just this Ukraine, were you thinking? No, uh, total. Oh, okay. About the, right. the flow of the entire, you know, uh, set oh, of okay. money okay. That, right. that through the entire Biden family. Right. Okay. But the question is, could this, is it possible this isn't the only, uh, quid, uh, only uh, evidence, potentially, of a quid pro quo, of a, could there be other different promises that were made, you know, with other, with the sources of money and everything else. Oh yeah. That the, all yeah. the multiple well. sources of money. So this could be scratching the surface here still with as big as mm-hmm. it is, uh, where again, 
we always say, let's wait and see what what hard evidence comes to the surface, um, and and then what other witnesses might be there. Well, uh, I think along it was the way. what was interesting is that he was uh, talking uh, with the uh, with the source and and or excuse me, the informant. And by the way, this informant, think about this, is an American businessman, mm-hmm. an American yeah. businessman who and and what I thought was fascinating was. And and they've identified uh, the person now as the I can't think of his name I don't have the at the moment now as the head of Burisma, right? Yeah. So this is right. the guy that put you know this this guy put Hunter Biden in there and everything else and he said yeah. he referred to Hunter Biden as being dumb, but it came out over the weekend that that it is the you know they have identified that as yeah. the president right. of of uh, of Burisma, but as he was and 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 he actually went to this American businessman who is the informant for the FBI that's been paid over 200,000 bucks and he sought him out. Yeah. It wasn't right. it wasn't the other way around like the FBI right. said, "Okay, try to work yourself, you know, into into this guy's uh um, uh, you know, a sphere of influence or whatever." It was the opposite. The guy, you know, the head of Barisma came to him and and said, "Basically, what it is is like a retainer." Yeah. So they could do a right. bunch of different stuff for them, it- including Including getting the prosecutor fired, right? Well, that it, it, which Biden proudly promoted yes, openly. Yes, I mean he was. That's the, the we've said from the beginning of all this that Hunter Biden is a liability. There's no doubt, right? But the greater liability for Joe Biden is Joe Biden. Joe Biden loves to talk about Joe Biden, Jack. Mm-hmm. I got that guy fired, Jack. He loves to brag about it. Well, Go you, ahead. You, you can brag all the way out of the White House as long as that's how it goes down because that's the that's the problem here. And we've been asking that for, for years. I mean, how much of a liability is he to himself well, when you consider the fact that he loves to openly talk about these things? Think, think, about, think about how much of a liability Trump is to himself. Oh, now, now it's... Because you know when you when you look, I mean, this <laughs> as, because I was looking at, I, I was thinking about that over the weekend. The, yeah. the fact of the the tie in to Biden saying I got the prosecutor fired. I got yeah. But if, if but now what, with the, what, with the what, exchange on on Trump right, the documents. But if if you want to compare it to what Trump did, mm-hmm. it was if it was if Biden had come out and just said no, I took the five million in a bribe. Yeah, yeah. That's but, what. That's how bad it is for Trump. What he actually it blows all. His entire defense has been blown by himself. Well, including his lawyers. Right. And and I understand because we talked about this the other day. There's, there's two things. There's the actual case. And the and political. Then, and then there's the two-tier justice system. Yes. Even if Trump is is guilty of everything that they charge, there's still a two-tier uh, uh, system based on Hillary Clinton yep. and probably on Biden himself. Yeah. But with right. Hillary Clinton, I saw, you know, Dan, uh, 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 Representative Dan Goldman, he's a piece of work. Who said? Uh, well, no. There's. Uh, it's different from Hillary because uh, uh, there was. She did not willfully conceal materials. Oh, give me of course a break. She did. What are you? It what was. Are you what do you mean? About? It was premeditated. What are you talking she, about? Before the materials. The even entire ex- thing was about right concealing all of that material. Right. And as and as I talked about on Thursday and Friday, what what she did was she committed a crime. Yeah. Where her whole goal was to commit a crime, to commit another crime. Right. Right. She put the yeah. server in her house. Right. In order to evade the Freedom of Information right, Act, right. that was a crime. The entire and, right the, idea was a was evasion. Right, right, and and if if Biden, if this does tie into any of the top secret documents, like Comer said, the one mm. top secret document found at the home where Hunter Biden stayed was on Ukraine, mm-hmm. and he believes that that had to do with the with the uh, the deals that they made with Ukraine. Well, at that particular point, you're using a classified document to take a bribe. Boom. Yeah. With Trump, yeah. this is the first thing I I think, I not first thing, but one of the things I took when I came in, I still don't know the intent. What was, no, his, it, in, well, what was his motive to do it except spite? Right, right. It's the back and forth with, the, you know, to, right. to get a win over the DOJ, you know, which basically yeah. is like the idea of a, a social media war, right? I'm the, I'm going to win the exchange, and that gets you nowhere. We know the weaponization of the DOJ. We certainly know the weaponization of the DOJ against Donald Trump. We know we all of that is out there. Don't hand them more. 
Well, the thing is that you and I have said this many times before. If you're going to run for president of the United States or high public office as a Republican, you need to be squeaky clean. For Trump, with everything that had gone on in his presidency where they attempted to set him up, for him to be so reckless and careless in the things that he said and did, mind-boggling to me. My, it was almost, you know, we talk about having no self-awareness. You know, that the one, the one uh, thing that came out, you know, if it's, if it's true, the text mm-hmm. of what was said between him and a reporter mm-hmm. and other people, Right. About, you know, uh, invading uh, Iran, highly classified defense intelligence. Uh, that was shared. Uh, uh, topics. Then he shared it with them and then publicly said, well, it's not declassified. I could have declassified, but I didn't. Can't do it now. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, all that but, blows but his case out of the water from what he was saying yeah, before. Just my, my, you read that, you're just, you're like, sorry, what an idiot. I, what, I mean, what, I, no, absolutely no self awareness whatsoever. And the worst thing, one of the worst things, the other thing that's so bad for him, the witnesses are going to be his lawyers. Yeah. By the way, I suspect his legal team is going to change sometime during this. Well, he had two quit the other day. Well, I and I mean, as yeah. as it gets down to the wire, I think it'll be an all new team. Yeah. Because but- because of the the way it is right now, you you basically kind of have to it, okay start fresh. If he doesn't do that, then he's not trying to win in the courtroom. I mean, well, those lawyers aren't a part of his case. Anymore. Well, I, I yeah. understand, but yeah. but the actions up until now, pretty much everybody that was involved until now, is a possible witness. Possible witness. Yep. And if you don't start clean in order to kind of clean that, help clean that slate, I don't know where you go. Eight six six ninety red eye. Every driver knows the cost of replacing tires is a major expense. What if you could save on tire costs without sacrificing performance or safety? Consider retreads, a sustainable, cost-effective way to rack up your miles. When talking retreads, sometimes there's worry when it comes to wear. But just because the tread is worn on a tire doesn't mean the casing is. Quality casings can far outlive their original tread. And once they're on your vehicle, the tread on a retread can last just as long or longer than the tread on a new tire. The key to preserving casings, whether new or retreaded, is regular tire maintenance checks. This report is brought to you by Shell Rotella. Shell Rotella, with advanced synthetic technology, is designed to help keep your rig running with more mileage and less maintenance. Coming up, more with Gary McNamara and Eric Harley. It's Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Sarah Carly, and I'm Gary McNamara. Okay, maybe I do have the energy. <laughs> <laughs> Off the air, apparently, yeah, well, yes, because well, during, no, the, I mean, we dur- during the whole break, we were we were talking about it. And what we're going to do here is, uh, first, we'll hit the Trump thing, but we're going to set aside, because obviously, and we I covered this when you were gone last week. Of course, no matter, you know, even with everything that had come out about Trump, his statement, yeah. what the lawyers are going to testify to, which is yeah. extremely damning. Right, yeah. That, you know, yeah. there is a two-tier justice system. Yep. We know there is. Yep. Because Hillary Clinton should have been convicted. Yep. And they're not, all likelihood, they're not going to indict. He's president, so he wouldn't be indicted anyway for a significant period of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, Biden. But, as I said, if they did find out Biden did take the, the bribe and that news was out there, he, pro, Republicans would probably be be forced to, uh, as I said on Thursday and Friday, probably be forced to impeach him. Yeah. Uh, at that point, now what would the Senate do? Well, if it's a bribe and you're a Democrat and you don't vote to remove from office, hey, you've got to live with that in 2024. But take that aside and just look at the actual legal case against Trump. We'll do yeah. that coming up. Yeah.
You're listening to Red Eye Radio from the Uniden America Studios. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carly, and I'm Gary McNamara. Uh, let's go to Tim in Hartford, Connecticut, about uh, the Trump indictment. Tim, welcome. You're on Red Eye Radio. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hey, thanks, guys. You guys have a great show. Thanks. Um, I think the whole thing, the whole Trump case is going to base, be based on the credibility of the FBI. I mean, you go back to the FOIA request. I have an entity here, Your Honor, who's lied. Then you look at the Mar-a-Lago raid. You got give me 50 FBI agents. Let me put 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 them in your house without anyone watching me. I bet I could make your house look uh, real like a real mess. Well, there there and was. Then, as far as the the tape recordings, mm-hmm. the tape recordings. I'll tell you, in the world of and this is a little offbeat, but in the world of AI, I could make some real interesting tapes that sound just like Donald Trump. And anybody else you want. Yeah, that's likely not the case here. But is it, you know, I, it, I agree with is you. the evidence 100 percent? Well, again, we'll let the we'll let the process play out here on the on the Mar-a-Lago raid. Uh, his attorneys were given a heads up now in terms of the who was they present. They were given a heads up, but they weren't allowed to observe. Well, there's a, there's a couple of things on the raid. There's a few things on the raid. Uh, <laughs> first of all, insisting they do it while he was out of town. Uh, so. The fact that he couldn't even be there, that they were going to do this while he was gone, that could be an issue. That could turn into an issue. We'll see if it does. That's up to his legal team to make that the issue. And then you go back. and But the problem that we're dealing with now is the ever, other evidence, the tape and the and the text messages and everything else, and then the integrity of those of, of, of what they actually show um, if, if, you know, if it's damning. And, you know, you had William Barr on over the weekend saying he thinks it's horrible. He thinks that, it, you know, it's not great for Trump. We'll see where it goes in the courtroom with well, this. But that's right now what we're dealing with. Well, here's with. the thing. When you, have, when you have the audio, you also know who the writer reporter who was in there and mm-hmm. the three other people. You have witnesses. There were the witnesses that were there. Yep. If they, that, and, and so if they don't exist and you simply have the audio, you mm-hmm. can make that claim. But right, if you right, have... Yeah. The, if you have the reporter writer who was there and the three other people who did not have uh, 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 classified clearance right. that he was telling that to, yeah. then you're uh, that that's bad. Do, Go ahead. Do either of you think the whole executive privilege between him and his lawyers is going to kind of resurface here? Uh, it could, it, you know, they could, yeah, could. That, that could be one thing that, that comes up. Because um, I, yeah, I yeah. saw Dershowitz and he said when the 11th district ruled yeah. against Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's, it's Dershowitz, but he's liberal. He said they got it wrong. Yeah. Well, then, and, yeah. and that on could, the, that, on the executive yep. privilege. And, and it could play out that in that direction. Well, in here's, court, so. but here's the problem. Now we know that the lawyers have, you know, have, testified against him Mm. and apparently if it's true one has said yeah he was urging us to try to hide the documents Mm. and if the lawyers if that's already out there it you know i I, again it can still be overturned in court you never know sure whatever the legal legalities of it would be this is why that's but that's not good when your lawyers who are trying not to testify you know, they didn't want to testify. They were trying to do everything they could not to testify. Right, right. And they're there to help you when they have evidence that says you're guilty of doing it. That's bad stuff. Yeah, and the only attempt you could make there is to have new attorneys come in and say, well, those attorneys were doing something wrong, and they, they weren't given that kind or, of direction. But that's a or that's you, a Hail Mary. Or you do win that, that at that point, you don't even get to that point. You simply say, well, for whatever legal reason— you know, attorney-client privilege should not have been breached at this particular moment, and the court agrees with you on that. And then, then all that is thrown then out. All that is gone. Thrown yeah. out. Yes. All that is gone. Just like with the Mar-a-Lago raid, if there were, if there, uh, if in the raid it can be determined uh, that it that his rights were violated because Mar-a-Lago is his home, if if they, you know, that they didn't, they violated his rights somehow in that in that search. I haven't seen that. You know that uh, that that thrown out by any legal expert but 
we're kind of early in this in, in terms of the court process. And and thanks for the call. We appreciate that, Tim. But if they could determine that, then then you can then maybe there's a lot of stuff that can't be used. But there's still again the back and forth and and what happened with the uh, the people in the media and the recording and the and the texts. All of that is is in play, and we'll see again where where that goes. Um, you know, at the end of this, does anybody believe that that Donald Trump is uh, is a foreign agent well aside from rosie o'donnell no do they believe that you know that that he's acting as a spy for another nation no the hard left probably still does but they still believe in the whole russian hoax thing you you look at it and and you know this isn't on the legal side of it it's separate from what's going on with biden but it it is not to be ignored that it is quite possible right now that the current president in the White House is compromised. That scares the hell out of me. And it should oh, yeah. everybody. It should. But we'll see where yeah. the legal case for Trump goes. And also we'll see where the political advantage or disadvantage goes in the primary. One of the things between now and the first uh, primary debate in August, um, and it's not really about the debate, that's just kind of a time measurement, the first summer uh, of, of fundraising is going to be a tell. That's going to be a tell as to where the campaigns are, where the confidence of the big donors is at that point. And that does shift, by the way, as things develop. You know, and But that's the whole point. They could be shifting right now. I guess we'll see. Here's here's some of the, the problems with the indictment. This was written, uh, this was written by, uh, well, Andrew McCarthy wrote this. Mm. Trump turned the conversation to his favorite obsession, Hillary Clinton. Specifically, he spoke. And understand, remember, this guy that I'm referring here, this is Andrew McCarthy, who wrote the book Ball of Collusion. Right. Yeah. It was first on top of the fact that the Hillary campaign set up, uh, Yeah. you know, Donald Trump. Yeah, he was was one of the principal uh, 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 individuals in terms of who covered the whole Russian hoax. And, And, of course, his book, as you mentioned. And and so the, the, the audio is extremely damning, mm-hmm. extremely damning. And if it's backed up by the people that were there, that's not good. Right. And yeah. the other thing is where he's talking to his lawyers, the conversation, he goes, uh, uh, Trump and his two lawyers understood uh, that the point of the meeting was how to handle the subpoena, but it turns out not everyone was on the same page about what handle meant. Trump turned the conversation to his favorite obsession, Hillary Clinton. Specifically, he spoke of a lawyer who had represented her when she was in a similar pickle, the recipient of the subpoena, hers was from Congress, Hmm. demanding that she turn over emails from her home brew, non-government, non-secure server system. Uh, According to Trump, then she got herself a lawyer who would help her, you know, handle the subpoena to the former president. This was the very model of uh, 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 legal normalness, Hmm. referring to the exemplary lawyer. Trump advised his two attorneys... He was great. He did a great job. You know what? He said He said of that that it was him, that he was the one who deleted all of her emails, the 30,000 emails, because they basically dealt with her scheduling and her going to the gym and her having beauty appointments, mm-hmm. and he was great. And he, so she didn't get into any trouble because he was the one that deleted them. Get it? It doesn't require a lot of translation. Right. But ju- and this comes as a federal attorney, but just in case anyone missed the point, the indictment recounts that the former president of the United States related that story more than once that day to his mm. lawyers. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and he was like, you know, that's goes that's the problem right there. Yeah. Your lawyers, right. yeah. your lawyers that were defending you and did everything not to testify against you were forced to testify and basically said you were you your whole point was you were leading them. To the point of of, and I don't know what the full response was from the lawyers back to him. Right. Yeah. But when the lawyers went to the lawyers, are not being charged with anything. Right. Right. The, That's, they're just essentially at this point right. uh, through depositions, right. they are witnesses right. against because yeah. the they the prosecution believes that the lawyers, you know, did he was hinting, you know, that all this stuff, but he didn't say he didn't tell them, you know, to uh, to act to uh, 
okay, here's what I want you to he do. He didn't give High, them a, a, a directive. Specific orders, right. Yeah, if you give them a directive, right. that's one thing. If right. they're if he's urging them to do that, but it he, still is going to work against you. But, but yeah. he lied to his lawyers. Right. Yeah. He told his lawyers one thing. That's why they're not going to prosecute the lawyers is because the lawyers weren't lying. The As the prosecution says, the lawyers uh, were telling what Trump told them. Right. And that's all they knew. Right. At that point. Yeah. So, like I said, it's not good, no matter how you try to spin it. And you, and that's why we said, look, you can talk about the, the two-tier legal justice system because Hillary yeah. should have gone to jail. Right, right. She should have right, been right. prosecuted for what she did mm-hmm. because hers actually had a criminal intent to it. Here, nobody can tell you. And if Biden, with the emails we know from supposedly from Ukraine that were out of their folders at his home where Hunter stayed, and that leads to the whole Ukraine bribe, Boom. I mean, that's yeah. using top secret documents yep, yep, in yep. order to uh, in order to uh, uh, escalate a or a, a a bribe or whatever to use mm-hmm. that information right. in order to get a bribe to enrich your own family. Mm-hmm. You go to jail for that with Trump. Why did he do it? Right. What was the point? But was it the back and forth, the game? Just, was it the game? You know, the the it, cat and yeah. mouse with the DOJ? That's the thing. As I said last Thursday and Friday, I still don't know what the intent is, and I still don't know what the intent was. And, you know, even some of the lawyers I've said, it's like he was just playing a game that I play a game with these people, and they want something, I don't give it to them. I'm like, mm-hmm. seriously? Mm-hmm. That's what you're going to? To me, there's so, no self-awareness that you don't do that with classified documents. Yeah, not the time to play cat and mouse right. or, or Especially, social media war it, it, because right. it reeks of a social media war. While this didn't play out on social media, it's that it's that back and forth where you just want that win. Now, if they come at you and that none of this happened, then clearly you want the win and you deserve the win. And it was like Andrew McCarthy. I suspect Trump was treating this back and forth with the feds just like another hard-nosed business mm-hmm. negotiation mm-hmm. and not an ongoing right. national security exactly. crisis of that's, his own that's making. That's exactly what hit my, you know, look, he's just in negotiating mode 100% of the time, and that's it. And it, and I'm going to win the negotiation. Mind-boggling. And it's not one, ultimately, you are going to win. Yeah. And you're certainly not going to win it this way. But I'd bring that up, though. You know, what would be the motive be? Right. Yeah. That might, that might be a defense for him. Well, no, I know, think, what would, what, I, I think it is. No, because, what was, what right. was the motive? There's because no motive. You, right. If you if if there was uh, evidence of a five or ten million dollar bribe from Iran or yeah. Iraq or uh, Israel. You know, then then, man, we'd have a massive. But what would be the motive for him doing this? This was part of the negotiating of the back and forth with the DOJ, nothing more, nothing less. And and that actually does help him in that he's not looking to commit this bigger crime. He's not acting as a foreign agent for another nation. 866-90-RED-EYE. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. It's Friday Radio. He is Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Yeah, I mean, we were just uh, talking during the break, and it's something we said before. You know, he wasn't acting as a foreign agent. He no. wasn't trying to get a bribe. He wasn't selling secrets to uh, to uh, to to anyone. He wasn't attempting to commit a crime as Hillary was by avoiding the Freedom of Information Act. We don't know about you know Biden and his long. Decades long, what goes back to 74, I think. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> 50, 49 years, a half a century of of uh, of uh, having uh, classified documents. But it's stupid. Well, that's the thing it's, that is if, if the I think there there could be and in, in it's hard to measure right now. But it's quite possible that the political advantage of this starts to erode for the following reason, that it's doing something stupid and if people are just shaking their head okay look uh the whole two-tier justice thing we is absolutely spot on and that is something that gives him a political advantage except if people get tired and we're talking primary now 
if people get tired of the, uh, you're just, but that's, and that's the whole thing. It's, it's not what you did. It's how you did it. Cause it you was, didn't, yeah. he didn't do anything. If you, he's not a criminal. He's not a foreign agent. He's not a spy, but you do something stupid repeatedly. And that's where people just kind of lose it. And, and, and just, they lose interest. It's not even that it's like, yeah, it was good president. And then they just kind of, they basically move on it. It, it you see more of a, uh, and it's not exactly voter apathy, but it's more of a, okay, yeah, it's time to move on. I, I just, I'm tired of this kind of behavior, and I, I just want to move on, and, and which is tragic because, again, he's not, he's not a criminal, and as a president, you look at all the things he accomplished, and holy cow, it towers over Joe Biden. But in the political season, minds, hearts and minds change, and this Will this do that? And that is the question in the primary season. Top of the Hour News is brought to you by House Products. Visit HouseProducts.com. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now. It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the world, we are Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. Download our Red Eye Radio app today and listen when and where you want if you can't listen live overnight so my take on it is send them all to jail what's that <laughs> just a joke. i'm ready just for a joke i'm waiting for cornell west to come out and and say that oh yeah yeah you know, yeah because yeah, yeah. he decided he decided to uh to uh run free everything and and but i like ah, what, well. i like what he said over the weekend <laughs> tell biden to get off the crack pipe <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I that need comes, I need that T shirt. That comes <laughs> that comes from Cornell West, yeah, as yeah. far left as you can possibly get. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell Biden to get off the crack pipe. Like, Man, <laughs> I need that T shirt. And and in order to substantiate it, you know, you'd have to have the quote and also have a picture of, you know, Cornell West on it. I mean, because it's a quote from him. That's funny. Well, we just talked about uh, you know, the the situation with uh the Trump, the leading candidate on the Republican side and yeah, yeah. on the other side, the allegation and all the sore stories of the uh Hunter Biden family and uh and uh the uh, the the president taking a basically a ten million dollar bribe from yeah. the head of Burisma mm-hmm. <laughs> for and as I and as I, as I told you when I was reading up on it, it was uh back last week where they said well, sort of like a retainer. Basically, like, yeah. For th- this other, isn't just a bribe. Whatever it's, we need you for, right? It's it's a bribe. It's a retainer bribe. Yeah, or it's, a bribe retainer. So, so you think about the idea of a quid pro quo. All right, but you know, I mm-hmm. I I dropped a suitcase over there that Mr. Biden and you know I'm not what I'm not sure what's in the suitcase. It's none of my business. It's you know I mean I'm sure it's broken down into twenty dollar bills though, and I can tell you that you know I. Uh, I don't know if something happened and uh, Burisma got permits here and Burisma got permits there by a, let's say, you know, a president of uh, a country just out of the blue United States uh, in that suitcase of money over there just disappeared magically. Then I wouldn't I would be none of my business. The quid pro quo is is always I mean, at this level, it is the most dangerous mm-hmm. until then you, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Barack Obama in my brain just tapped me on the shoulder. Never underestimate the ability of Joe Biden to F things up because what? even a quid pro quo, he made worse by not just a quid pro quo on one item on one issue, but if it, if it, if the source stories are true, an ongoing flow of quid pro quos, which is far more dangerous. I mean, you think about it. 
one quid pro quo or a quid pro quo on one or two items. Do do the these two things for Burisma, and here's the money, right? I mean, that would be the that would be the magic in that whole thing in that equation. No, that's not enough. Joe Biden, everybody. Uh, never un- underestimate the ability to e- even on a bribe. Oh, no, 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 Jack. I'm not going to do just one or two things, Jack. I'm going to get the prosecutor fired. I'm going to do this, we're on, Jack. We're on retainer. I'm on retainer, we're on Jack. bribe retainer here. Come on. What are you, uh, what are you smoking, but, crack? But you look at that. I mean, the Trump problem, he's the leader in the Republican yeah. side, and Biden yeah. uh, under the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, shadow now of... Yeah of uh, the the whole bribe story out there and we know we we know he did influence peddling we yeah. know because the money's there but the whole point is if they can prove a quid pro quo detainer mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm yeah. sorry a retainer not retainer. detainer retainer yeah. re- re- retainer here now he might be detained at some point <laughs> right but, but you look at everything else you're like wow well, there's where we are in america no right i mean now. it's the, the, it, but, it really is insane now you know at the end of it it's you know it goes back to um you you look at it for the longest time we talked about it uh with trump the only thing that the media had were his words now in in this and, and again, it's politically, <laughs> your words can hurt you. Um, but at the end of this, still where we are, nobody's making the allegation. I mean, in the in the 37 counts, there's nothing about him being a, a foreign agent or any allegations of him taking a bribe and, and wanting uh, to sell the know, information, wanting to like sell that, right. the information or benefit from sharing that information in any way other than ego, I guess, or, or I don't know, or just, just the, the fact that he was just talking and I, I'm not saying that he didn't break the law. Uh, that's again, this is, we're going to, no, gonna, by, by the, by the letter of the law, they all broke the law. Yeah. No, it, broke according the law to, because, yes. According right, to the allegations, they, everybody yes, broke the law. Yes. All yeah. of that is, yeah, there it's, you can see clearly that and again, it, it, you have to. It's what what do they say uh, in court? It's not what you, it's what you can prove. Um, but and we'll see where that plays out. But here's the you know at the end of it all, uh, it's there was no intent for him to go on and do a a bigger crime. It's just right handling and, and, something yeah. in a really stupid and, manner. And and we talked we talked about this last week when it comes to the whole willfulness, and we mm-hmm. said well. You know, and I, when I saw Dan Goldman, I mean, what a tool. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Hillary, there was no willful. Oh, of course there was. Gosh, are you she, kidding me? She, the whole idea was she, to do that. was the entire reason. Right, right. right. And, it, and it wasn't, I've I've got these top secret things right here. I'm going to keep them. It was, I don't even know what top secrets I'm going to be dealing with over the next few years as Secretary of State. I'm just going to hide all of them and ha- all of my uh, uh, correspondence. I'm going to take it outside the closed system, well, willfulness. I mean, there was a premeditative willfulness, not afterwards or not after you had it, but and or after you discovered it. She was premeditated in everything, and her goal was, you know, to uh, to commit a crime. And so, what the Department of Justice is saying, and we got into this discussion last week, it's the willfulness of the pre- of of former President Trump that makes it so this is worth prosecuting. And and uh, uh, Pence isn't and and uh, and uh, 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 whether uh, Biden is or not, we'll see. Mm-hmm. And the same with Hillary. We well, can't make that case for Hillary because it was uh, uh, willfulness. But it is against the law to have classified documents. But that's mm-hmm. why the uh, what do you, what do they call it the uh, the Presidential Act. Uh, the Presidential Document Act, whatever yeah, it's called. Yeah, yeah. That's why that was put in there, because they knew that the president has, you know, has access to extremely high classified information. Mm-hmm. And when you move from the White House and if can't you take it with quick, you when you go yeah. quickly. Yeah, you're not supposed to take it with you, but it happens where it's taken in. And then there's the debate of the things that are personal that you view as more personal that may be classified right. versus national intelligence or versus defense intelligence. And that's still, as Dershowitz said, that hasn't all been worked out. This may be where the court defines, 
you know, what the parameter is or, de- or, or demands it since Congress. Oh, the Presidential Records Act, yeah. Presidential Records Act, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and since, and, and it needs to be more detailed, who knows where that will happen. But what the Department of Justice is saying is willfulness is why they're going to prosecute Trump. Well, that doesn't exist in the law anywhere. Mm-mm, mm-mm. The willfulness is just their reason to go after him right, right. And, and, and not go after uh, uh, Trump. So they're, what they're saying is that's the morality. Willfulness makes it a bigger immorality, which is why it should be prosecuted. Right. All right? Yeah. Well, then Hillary should have been prosecuted yeah. without question. And when you look at, for example, even Biden and when you look at Pence— yeah. They had no reason to have classified information. Right. You know, on you know, uh, at at home at any time, the Presidential Records Act doesn't cover them. That doesn't apply. Doesn't cover them. And so at that at that point it's like, well, wait a minute. So you're saying uh you're saying willfulness is what what counts. Well, isn't a criminal act which Hillary was involved in. Yeah. I mean, she willfully put the server in her home yeah. to avoid the Freedom of Information Act for anything she might write in the future. Right. So she was covering herself beforehand knowing, think about this, I know I'm going to be doing wrong. I don't want that to, there to be a permanent record. Mm-hmm. And then she went on to destroy and smash cell phones. And her lawyer, remember, deleted thousands upon thousands of, of of emails, you know, uh, thirty what was it thirty thousand emails mm-hmm. uh, were uh, were were deleted, mm-hmm. and so you look at it, and when uh, and then Comey made the decision, not a prosecutor, right? Remember, Comey made the decision, right, not to prosecute. It right. wasn't his decision to make, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you talk about the box. screwed up, right. right? Exactly, and you know, and and it, it's it, it is it's beyond maddening. And and so when you when you look at at uh, at this and and you know what Biden had mm. you know for example and the fact of of and this is where you look at the willfulness it was out of its pack you had documents yeah. Yeah. this is what Comer said and one right. document yeah. they believe was on Ukraine mm. and it's where Hunter Biden stayed well that's what you look if you're looking for willfulness they're trying to say well Trump had him all over his house and then he said this. But what was that? You know, you look at the criminal intent. Why? You know, we know that there was influence peddling. And now there's, we know the classified document that Comer believes that was at the house that uh, that, uh, Hunter had that, uh, you know, uh, would then connect having these classified documents to having information in order to be on a bribe retainer with Ukraine. Right. Now, he doesn't talked about that in the last couple of days but he brought it up about two weeks ago or three weeks ago mm. when he mm-hmm. talked about that's why we want to see that particular document that's mm. why they want to see all the documents that biden had right, right. And i don't believe that they have right at this point see right. all the documents yeah. yeah so uh yeah so if you're looking at the department of justice saying okay willfulness is the standard we prosecute right well then you hillary you should have prosecuted and in all likelihood, Biden's got some serious problems. But it's tough because we don't know yet anything about Biden. Right. But it doesn't mean what Trump didn't do was extremely stupid. Right. And you just, you you, you shake your head going, when I heard this, I go, are you kidding me? Well, and all weekend, what was his motive? What was his motive? Right. What was his motive? What was his motive? And it's what, just, where, it, where it, was it gets the, back to the art of the deal, right? I'm just, just I'm, the, I'm, 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 he's constantly in negotiating mode. And it's just, you, know, you just want to win the negotiation. Negotiating is one thing, but admitting when you publicly were stating you declassified everything and then you're caught on tape clearly stating you did not declassify when you left. Well, no, I and, think, and, I, and you should have, but you can't do it now. But that's, it, it's part of the same mentality, right? Because you're, you're, it publicly saying, oh, look, I, you know, I did that. I already declassified all that. And then behind, yeah, I didn't do that. I was just, you know, where this is part of the back and forth. And, and you, but you're not going to win that because it's not like a social media war. This is the well, Department of well, Justice. It's not, even, a bu- it's not a business dealing exactly. either. There, there you're sending no, your lawyers to talk to the there FBI. There is no win. No. It doesn't no win. end with you right. getting, and, and that's the other thing too. Where's the There's, win? There is no brag or uh, uh, there is no trophy. There is no trophy in that. Right. If if you win an election, 
that's a trophy. If uh, you win a case, if you're innocent and you're proven to be innocent, that's a win. In something like this, there's not a win because in those negotiations, I mean, nobody knew about the, the classified documents thing and the back and forth with the DOJ except for people internally. There is no public win there. Right. There's nothing to brag about there. Even if this thing had gone out, you know, had been drawn out to where, okay, hey, finally, you know, they, you know, uh, he held on to that document and then finally at the very end, okay, then the one document was, he had the last document was turned over or whatever. There's, there's no trophy there. There's, hey, look, everybody, what I did. Nobody was watching. Nobody knew about yeah. it. And there was no win. So if you're in that mentality, you're doing it in the wrong arena. Because there is no arena in that case. It's not happening in the public. It's not happening on social media. It's not a back and forth in that way. But if your mindset is that, then you don't, you can't pull out of that mode. It's the only thing I can come up with as to why you do that. 866 red eye Smart owner-operators make every single week as profitable as possible. One trip is not enough time to be considered profitable or unprofitable, and an entire month may be too much time to manage. One week is the right amount of time to deal with efficiently. To do so, look at the advantages and disadvantages of every day of the week. Match trip length to the optimum day of the week. Plan to deliver on the day you have the best opportunity of getting a load. Your personal weekly plan will vary depending on the weekly delivery flow cycle of your region, typical length of haul, personal requirements, and other factors. What's important is to have a specific weekly plan that helps you be successful. Owner Operator Business 101 is provided by Shell Rotella with advanced synthetic technology. For more information, go to OverdriveOnline.com to the Overdrive's Partners in Business section of the website. For more detail on Business 101 and many other topics. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Uh, uh, good morning. Um, yeah, right. we uh, we are the nation's fire extinguisher, <laughs> putting out fires left and right. Um, you know the the breakdown of all these things. It, you and I are always very interested in looking at the uh, the legal system and law and how it's written and, and, you know, all of this, there are some very serious, very serious things on the table right now. The, the whole bribe thing with Biden is a, is it to me should be the only discussion. I mean, it's not that the media, of course, the left media is going to focus on Trump. Uh, but, and, and that is a story, but the right now there is in my mind, there are a, a, sirens blazing. A president compromise is always a should be should be a much bigger story than than uh, How and, is it and, and and ex, and than an ex president in a debate between the Presidential Records Act and right. National uh, Defense Intelligence. E- exactly, and and I, you know, my in my mind, sirens are going off, and and but nobody is doing anything because the media is just. You know, they're more of the dismissive thing. And they just, and I saw that since uh, a lot of that, since uh, the uh, uh, source story came out last week on from Fox News. But you, the evidence is what the evidence is. And we'll see where that goes. If these allegations are true, then it is only a matter of time before Biden either has to resign or he's removed from office. If that can be proven, you're going to get enough Democrats to get it done, I believe, in the Senate. But it would it won't get that far. It'll be it'll play out. It would play out again if the evidence is clear. I, I just want to make sure that I I say that. Not we're not going. We're not saying the source stories. I haven't seen it myself. But by the, if we were to get to that point, and it is, it'll play out just like it did with Nixon. 
and yeah, well, he'll, he'll know. Yeah, and and the the problem for Biden is the fact that as we've mentioned, uh, the polling that shows the majority of Americans believed he illegally, uh, you know, took money for influence peddling. Right. Right. And sixty three percent. That 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 the funny part of that is the sixty three percent that believe that uh, that Hunter Biden was involved in illegal influence peddling. Right. But not, and so there's a ten percent difference. Those ten percent of people right, don't understand right, right. what influence peddling yeah. means. Hunter can't be right. influ. It's not. You're not. It's Joe, right? It's Joe <laughs> exactly. It's and and so uh, you, uh, when when you look, that's the problem, and nothing gets better. And that was before all the information from last week came out. This is about two weeks old. Right. That latest uh, uh, study, and that's the problem that uh, he has. We'll talk more coming up. Consider yourself canceled if you don't listen nightly. Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carley and I'm Gary McNamara. So where does this all go politically? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows where this goes? I mean, uh, uh, you uh, you saw a, a lot of uh, the, the, re- the response last week when the indictment first came came up where mm. Trump announced it mm-hmm. and you had, you know, Ramaswamy, for example, came out and said, uh, if he's elected, he'll pardon the president, you know? So, mm. Uh, mm. yeah. Uh, I do think that when the specific allegations with the evidence that the prosecution says they have, mm. I think as you saw, it switched to the two tier justice system. Right. That yeah. seemed to be yeah. the Wall Street Journal saying, man, you know, his words again are mm-hmm. the, you know, the mm-hmm. with with Trump, it's his own words. He's his own worst enemy. Right. But they said, actually, what should have still happened in this case is that, you know, the the uh, the uh, what the uh, prosecutor, special prosecutor goes to the Department of Justice and then they just say, nope, sorry. You know, here's what he did wrong. Here's what he did wrong. Here's a, he did this, he did this, but we're not going to prosecute because it's an ex-president and whatever, and then you move on from that point. Right, right. And it is what they should have done because now, he said, this just blows the country into the the in, entire thing. And this is the thing, no matter what, no matter what stupid things Trump did here, mm-hmm. if all of it's true, mm-hmm. it's some of the dumbest stuff ever with no self-awareness mm-hmm. whatsoever mm-hmm. because there was no ultimate criminal act he was attempting to commit right, so it's like right. oh i did it just because uh uh i like to negotiate and no matter what i'll negotiate no matter what it well there's times to negotiate and times you don't negotiate like you don't mm. negotiate when it could be an appearance of obstruction of justice right you know you, you don't do that and you don't do that with the lawyers and you don't say things you don't present you don't present a top secret document to a reporter, writer, and three other people that don't have yeah. clearance. I mean, right. that's just yeah. dumb. But still, there was no ulterior motive to do so. Right. Uh, you know, and so this wasn't part of a bigger right. crime. And and so I was reading Charles Cook, and he just blasting, just blasting Trump, saying, "Haven't you people had enough?" Yeah. You know, doesn't matter. He goes, "I understand what Hillary did and everything else." And he's kind and, of been but, on that. Charles Cook right. has kind of been on that he's for on a while. But no. Hillary yeah. didn't become president because of what she did. Right, was exactly. the point he was making. And mm-hmm. so, uh, it's like, are, are we are we sick of this yet, or are we now going to have an election not based on any issue whatsoever, but that Trump is a victim of a two tier system, uh, e- even if the things that he did broke the law because they all broke the law. Mm-hmm. Everybody broke the law mm-hmm. here, whether mm-hmm. it was Pence, whether it was Trump, whether mm-hmm. it's Biden, right. whether it was Hillary. Right. And the Justice Department is saying that the willfulness is, you know, where you go and prosecute. And Trump and Pence said no willfulness. 
and and uh, Hillary had no willfulness, which they can't make the case. That's the, that's absolutely uh, false. The, Demo- did. the Democrats were trying to make that point. They right. can't make that point. That was premeditated willfulness. Yeah, right. And, and premeditated willfulness to commit the ultimate crime, which is keep everything from the Freedom of Information Act, which means I'm going to be separate from the system. And the FBI acknowledged bad actors, which means foreign countries, got top secrets from inside. That of was the, highly sophisticated right. willfulness. Yes, that was highly sophisticated. It's, it's as not yes. just premeditated, right. it, which is which is of course the the legal point. But if you look at it, the the premeditation and what it takes to carry it out, right? Not the having the idea and then and then carrying it out. Not just that, but that you had to go through such means to make it happen, and it carried on, and then at the end erasing everything with the bleach software in the way that they did. It was very, very, right. very clear if you're looking at it from a legal standpoint. It is so damning. Yeah. And in this case, it was the back and forth. And and then, then you went through where the FBI director in an administration made yeah. the decision not to prosecute yeah. when yeah. that's not his job. It's not his job. He it's doesn't like, prosecute. It's, the it's, it, well, it's almost as if he took the. It was almost as if he was taking the case and all the documents related to the case and the investigation and locking them up and keeping them away from. Pro- it was like he was protecting the documents, you know what I mean, or evidence in that case, and saying, well, "I'm not going to let any prosecutor do it." You know, when he did the whole "no reasonable prosecutor," that's you're not the prosecutor. You're not the prosecutor. Yeah, you don't make. You don't make. This that is this is what we right. found, and we will leave it to prosecutors uh, to decide where this is going to go. And and so this election may be on a two tier justice system, mm-hmm. not on all the issues that Americans are uh, that Americans are concerned about. Right. And it could be even more of a two tier uh, justice system, depending on what happens with Biden and the whole thing with Biden here. Yeah. Because remember, it looks like. From what we know, it looks like the FBI really isn't investigating Biden. It's simply the Republicans in Congress. Right. No, it it looks like the FBI has kind of, you know, put it away, filed it away and is not doing anything more. And and so, you know, that's the that's the situation we could be in. There's still a long time now. There's still a long, long time. And I guarantee you, every single Republican while bringing up the two tier system of justice except maybe Hutchinson did over the weekend I think mm. he went after uh, uh, went after uh, uh, Trump mm. uh, but every one of them including DeSantis because mm. DeSantis was a little quiet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're all thinking okay what do I do obviously everybody looks at this and says how could Trump do this it's so stupid mm-hmm. there's nothing to gain here why would he do it how do we effectively promote that is what DeSantis is thinking right now without losing the fact that there's a two-tiered system of justice. That's the tightrope that every single uh, yep. uh, Republican is walking well, uh, and, right and, now. And I think, you know, one approach, and I don't know what they'll do, one approach could be that you stay focused on the issues and set yourself apart that way, right, where you demonstrate that you're not going to make a series of bad decisions and that you're going to stay focused on the task at hand of, and all of that. Now, that is more doing that without communicating that you are that. And, and, and you could. You could say, I'm going to remain focused on the issues at hand. I'm going to remain focused on the issues at, at hand without fully engaging. Is one tactic. But at some point, the question comes up, whether it's a debate stage interview or somewhere else. So I guess we'll see how they approach that. Well, I think eventually by the time you get the debates, if Trump is part of the debate or not part of the debate, Mm. it's going to come up and say, you know, why did why did why did Trump? Right. You're going to hear it. Why did. And I think you may hear it in the next. I wouldn't might be a month. I mean, Mm. they may wait a little bit here to let to let this see where this thing all pans out. Mm hmm. But I wouldn't be surprised if you had uh, Republican candidates come out and say, all right, Trump told everyone mm-hmm. that he declassified it. That's what he mm-hmm. told you. Mm-hmm. Here he is on tape saying he didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Why is he lying about that? Mm-hmm. What was the end point? You don't sit there and say, if, if, if politically, 
if you're a Republican, you don't sit, you sit there and go, I know there's a two-tier system of justice, obviously, because Hillary should have been in jail. But what is Trump doing here? Why did he tell us one thing and then clearly to a writer and three other people without classified, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, authorization, why did he tell them exactly the opposite? Mm-hmm. What kind of game was he playing here? Mm-hmm. That's how you do it if you're another Republican. I think, I think he, especially if you're anyone who is below in the polls right now, anyone below DeSantis, I mean, you have to punch up. You have to go after your opponents. That's just the way it is. Um, now, the difference is is how far you have to punch up, right? Someone that's at 1%, 2% of the polls, you know, has to either, either capitalize on it and say, you know, like uh, Ramaswamy, you know, if I become president, I'll pardon him. Um, that is, you know, there's one approach, but the question too is how do the polls change? If you're, if you're a candidate, if your campaign is looking at it and then you start seeing things in July and August and Trump's numbers are eroding without you engaging in that, then you don't have to punch up as far. If that, that's where the, that's where the, the level of that approach changes. But how does Trump do any interviews now? I don't I don't know. No, I think it's only going to be rallies. I, I mean, yeah, I don't how know. Can he do, I mean, he how, might do how, interviews how can he he's do, been known to. Well, the first question will be, every interview will be, you told you told us mm-hmm. that you told America that you declassified everything. Right. Clearly is this tape false? Mm-hmm. And so you're going to have everybody well, you're going to have everybody uh, uh, his lawyers are going to be saying, "Shut up." Well, well, his lawyers if I'm his lawyers, you don't bring it up and you don't answer any questions regarding that at all. You do what Biden does. It, because I don't talk about anything the Department of Justice is handling. I'm not going right? to talk. I'm not. Yeah, I'm I'm not going to talk about will a, he, a, an ongoing case. Will he do that? Because he didn't over the weekend at no. the rallies. He's right. talking about it. Right. And that's and and that's a huge. Uh, we talked about the liability of, of Biden, which I do think is bigger and more dangerous. Mm-hmm. But in this, the political liability is talking about it. The legal liability is talking about it. Yeah. It doesn't help you on either front. Uh, you know, you could you can use the approach. Everyone knows I am. I'm, I'm not a, a foreign agent. Everyone knows that I'm not taking bribes like Biden is taking bribes. I mean, if you're on a. a, a, a yeah, a rally no, stage. No. Yeah, you're, you're right. You can right. say you can say that hey, everyone hey. knows this, and those negotiations, the back and forth of the, those negotiations, is typical. And the Department of Justice is weapon, and then you just leave it. You don't talk about anything right. else on the internal stuff because there's no way. To, well, first of all, there's no way to do that without tainting your own case, and you don't want to do that. Uh, you don't want to make it worse. Eight six six ninety red eye. We'll be right back with more Red Eye Radio with Eric Harley and Gary McNamara. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. And and so you wonder what happens after tomorrow. I mean, it'll be a big to do tomorrow when yeah. he's yeah. arraigned. Yeah. In uh, in in Miami, uh, and then like the last time, does it all go quiet again? And then right. if it all yeah. goes quiet, does the focus go back on Biden? I did see you have Republicans now coming out saying, "Okay, Dershowitz came out and said there's enough to impeach. Uh, there's enough to uh, impeach." Uh, uh, Biden right now, mm-hmm. based on what we know of the influence peddling, because everybody knows there was influence peddling right, when he right. was vice president. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the question is, well, do you do it now to make the point, but not get it through the Senate? I mean, do you impeach for the heck of impeaching, right, and right, not yeah. succeed, right. and make Biden more popular, or do you wait till they have the evidence that a bribe was taken? Because you, and the, then the, right, yeah, yeah, you're right. Because the goal should be to get him out of office. If he indeed is compromised, which I believe he is compromised, how can he not be compromised? But if he is, you want him out of office. You don't want the 
a political impeachment. I mean, I know impeachment is political, but what you want ultimately is removal. Right. Because what we did learn, we did learn that uh, over the weekend with everything uh, uh, coming out, uh, not over the weekend, but over the last five days, is that impeachment number one, impeachment two was bogus, but impeachment number one has been completely blown out of the water. Mm-hmm. Because there was a legit reason for Trump to look into what was what was going on in right. Ukraine. We now know that. Right. Now, we knew that at the time because we knew that the Obama State Department was extremely concerned about what was going on with Joe Biden as the point man for Ukraine and Hunter Biden being on the board of Burisma. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we covered that yeah. a long, 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 long time ago. So right. Right. there was always... Okay, well, it might be both. Well, yeah, well, if it's both, then you, you can't impeach for that. Right. Well, now we know it was a, it was a uh, legit concern. Mm. What I wonder is for Trump, because there's, there's a difference here. Um, Russia collusion, he was a victim. Yep, yep. Yeah, we were talking about uh, this off the air earlier. When, yeah, when, when, when you look at this here, it's tougher when you see what he said and that his lawyers are going to testify against him, it's tougher at that point to call him a victim of the left. Right. You Who can say a victim right. of a two-tiered system. You can say a number of things. But, right, ha- however, right, right. there are things when the and, – and Bill Barr was saying this over the weekend – that he's not a victim. Um, and, and you and I kind of uh, extrapolating from that look, you go back to the Russian hoax clearly a victim from start to finish mm-hmm. on this not a victim in in every sense there are things that he himself did and is responsible for now it's these are stupid things and nobody is trying well, to make the allegation that he is a spy you know uh, on a larger crime but you are there are you can look at things where the law was broken and you can say, all right, this is these are the things that didn't have to happen. Well, it's almost as if he was inviting them in, as if, right. look, I, I, I want you to charge me. Yeah, right. I'm going to make it so crystal clear in my own words right. that you should charge me. Right. Yeah. Almost like a challenge yeah. or something. Yeah. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the world, we are Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Harley, and I'm Gary McNamara. All right, just very briefly here, because you were talking about, oh, he's Eric Harley, I'm Gary McNamara. Did we say that already? I think we did. I said that, okay. Yeah, yeah, I think. Um, uh, But uh, you were talking about uh, uh, being in Wyoming this weekend and the the, the truck show and that, Mm -hmm. you know, just... The economy, based on what trucking's moving right now, right, yeah, not looking so good. This caught my eye, and then it relates to something that uh, an Uber driver told me the other day. But uh, this was in Fox headed. Americans are getting tired of tipping. Oh wow! Survey wow. shows, and they go, "Here's why, bitch! It's inflation, inflation." Yeah. Well, no, I mean, okay, um, a couple of times. Uh, uh, we we while I was traveling in in this and I also use uh, this service at uh, here at home uh, DoorDash, right? And those food delivery services, uh, you know, um, that are I think are are great. Uh, Uber Eats actually is one of them, and and I like the convenience of that. I would rather go to the restaurant because that travel time in the car quite often. You know, I, I just like the freshness of sitting down in the restaurant. Don't always have the time. So uh, I've used it twice in the past few days, once while in Wyoming. We were in a, uh, you know, we were working and, and we needed to get something there, uh, you know, fairly quickly. And we had different people in different places. There was a, a parade, a truck parade going on downtown. 
and we were in another work location for the event. So I thought, okay, look, we'll just get some food and, and bring it here. Uh, simple solution. And so I've noticed that these apps, uh, they now, it is a, uh, here's our suggestion. You don't have to tip on those apps, and then that includes Uber. Uh, you don't have to, but on those, it comes up, okay, here's our suggested tip. And it's, you know, it's usually 15, I think, is where they start, 15%, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to tip because I think of it, this way. I would like that service to continue. If I'm using the service and I'm benefiting from the service, I want it to be around. I want to have, and it's likely that that driver, that particular driver may never bring anything to my door again. But the point is, is to support something like that so that it's going to be in play. Plus, you know, I mean, the gas isn't cheap. Um, the, the wear and tear on the vehicles. One time a guy brought something from, delivered something from a restaurant that has multiple locations. But for some reason, it was from a location that was a, a good travel for that person. And now I, I, I'm i thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm looking on the map because it shows you, okay, here's your driver, here's when they're going to be there. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, no, I'm going to have to up the tip. And I did. I threw in uh, an extra tip because I didn't know it was going to be so far. I can see, though, because I notice now that the it is changing on those apps. I had a grocery delivery uh, recently, and I haven't been doing that as much. Uh, but I had to do it on that day, and 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 it was Walmart, and they had changed the way that their delivery system or their uh, tip is is also configured it used to be a flat amount and then they went to percentage and I started thinking of this I thought okay you're you're buying things you're paying a premium for things and then if you're getting a delivery or if you're taking an uber that is per mile <laughs> you know what it would cost you overall to uh, either uh, I get a ride from a friend or whatever, uh, that is a premium. But everything else that's compounding outside of that exchange in terms of uh, inflation has has people reviewing what they're, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it, here's my question, because I don't use Uber a lot. But the... The passenger gets a rating, and the driver gets a rating. Yes. So my question is for those for those Uber drivers, because honestly, if you're not getting the tips, I I don't know how you can keep doing it. Let's just say they just really dwindle down to almost nothing. You can't keep doing that. It's it's just not gonna it's not gonna work for you. But you're so if they don't tip. That has to affect the rating that the driver gives the passenger. Exactly. I mean, that's the when when you look at it, uh, when people say well, you, you tip, I go absolutely. I go why? Because I used to work in the service business. Mm-hmm. Now I didn't work as a server. Yeah, I right. was a club DJ at all the mm-hmm. places, but I worked with servers and bartenders, mm-hmm. and so I knew mm-hmm. the I knew the culture. Yeah, they're and, not getting rich doing this. Right. I mean, this is right. their living, and they really rely mm-hmm. on on those mm-hmm. tips. And so they, it's really the impact of knowing what it is and understanding that that's the relationship. And I know people have said before, well, I know you're supposed to tip, but I don't tip because I don't believe in tipping. I go, well, then don't go in the store then, because then you, you don't know, use the service. Right, because you, you you know how it goes. And it's a, it doesn't have to be legal for me to do it. It has to be, okay, what's the morality right. behind this? Okay. Yeah, right. And I was reading here, it says two-thirds in the survey's respondents on tipping have a negative view about tipping, including 41% saying they feel businesses should pay their employees better Rather than relying so much on tips, well, you're well, going to you're not going to it's it's you're, you're still going to be charged for it anyway. Well, <laughs> the, here's the thing: it, you are, and you may have that belief, but if you say this is why I'm not going to do it, and you're using it as a protest, something tells me you're also cheap. And and well, again, 
if the if you are frugal, there's nothing wrong with being frugal. Just don't eat in restaurants that right. where there you're, right. you're going to have a server. Go go to the there. By the way, there are plenty of restaurants. Uh, there's a great barbecue place near my house where you go up and you put your order in. You pay right there. And it's not a, you know, they don't have a server bring it out to you. They call you up and you get your tray of, you know, what you ordered. You go back up. Your, and, and so if you want to go eat somewhere, you can in places where uh, mm-hmm. tipping is not part of it. Uh, and, uh, and, and so uh, it says uh, 16% uh, noted that they would be willing to pay higher prices if they could do away with tipping. Well, it's still, you probably end up paying near the same amount. Uh, and 15% say they're confused about who and how much to uh to uh to to tip but what i found interesting and this is just uh, an example of uh, you know again it's just one example um but a buddy of mine who i know i went to high school with and he's retired and he's got the uber thing you know he signed up for uber and yeah but he yeah. doesn't do it maybe every three months right he'll go out and do it yeah. Well, he went out right. the other day. This is in in uh, Western New York. Mm. He went out and did fifteen rides two days in a row. So he got thirty rides. Mm. Two people tipped. Wow! Wow! Really? That was it. Two people tipped. You know, it's I, again. If I'm using that for convenience, it is a great convenience. There's a value to okay. I don't have to uh, like. Uh, in fact. Uh, uh, Mike, the Boston trucker, you might follow him on YouTube, but he was a judge at Super Riggs, and I was asking, you know, because he was he was leaving out, and I said, when are you going to get home? He's in, in Massachusetts. He said, like, close to midnight. He goes, yeah, I'm going to have to Uber home. You know, he said, you know, the wife will already be asleep. But that's uh, it's all right. It's no no big deal. It's easy enough to do the whole thing. But it's that convenience, right, of going to the airport. That's a great convenience. So you don't, have, by the way, could save you money because you don't pay for parking, right? I, depending right. on how much you pay for uh, well, the Uber. Well, you know something, though? Uber, I believe, has had a direct impact on parking at DFW Airport. Oh, yeah. No, I, because, I think you're right because, on that. Because you can yeah. now do the you can now do the uh, you know, the prepay. Right. And you can cancel within 24 hours. Right. But you, you can do the prepay, and it's sometimes just – and I'm talking about undercover in yeah. the terminal, right. you know, a hundred feet from you know your gate, the, yeah, your, not your gate, but walking in, yeah, yeah, oh, you know, the to, to, to the to, to the, the, the to the yeah. terminal, yeah, which is so incredibly convenient, right? And I think I'm booked for the next three weekends. I'm back, and it's probably about instead of twenty seven dollars a day, mm-hmm. it's ten dollars a day, yeah. So Uber is actually more expensive to take back and forth, right? Right. But I think that's because of the competitive effect of Uber, which is because they didn't they didn't do that before. But when I take Uber. I will always tip mm-hmm. because I talk to enough drivers where if you got a five, if mm-hmm. you pop up at a five, you're more likely to get a ride quicker. And when I want Uber, I have to I, have I, the ride now. See, that's, so I that's always the thing. tip because yeah. I realize the that I want it because it, I remember there have been times even with having it because I know my rating's still a five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I've, you know, I've been taking Uber for what, probably 10 years, 12 mm-hmm. years, mm-hmm. something like that. And drivers going, yeah, we noticed you're five. You're going to get a, you know, you're going to get hit. Yeah. And at times, you know, I've had just a couple times have troubles with, uh, with Uber. I used to have problems with taxis all the time where I lived. I could not get a, uh, a taxi. And so I realized how unreliable the service was in the beginning. And the funny thing is, because I tip well on Uber, I've gotten the same driver who recognizes me because yeah. they do my area and they're like, okay. oh, okay, oh, that's him? Oh, yeah, boom. Oh, that's and, interesting. And I'll yeah. sit there and I'll go, I know this driver. Yeah. I know this driver. Right. I said, yeah. I knew you. Go, I know you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, right. Okay. Well, and, and those are the things. Uh, if, if you need that service, you want it to be there. Uh, mm-hmm. You want it to be there fast, especially if it's like something – where oh my gosh I got to get A to B and I don't for whatever reason uh, my you know dri- me driving there is not an option, but also uh, we look at at the especially right now the service industry overall and how it has changed drastically after COVID and the, the pandemic had a lot of people reevaluating saying you know what I don't want to go back to being on my feet all day and doing that it's not an easy job if you're a server uh, bartender uh, but 
you rely on those tips. And so if I go to a restaurant or, again, use a service, uh, I want that to be in play going forward. Uh, I also understand how it works. Otherwise, I can stay home, eat a sandwich, or I can drive myself or get a ride from a family member, you know, if that's the case. If I really want to object to it, that's there's nothing with wrong with objecting to that or saying they should, the companies, uh, if you believe that, should pay them, their, their bosses should pay them more. That's fine. Just know that if you're going to participate, that's part of it. They, now, right. do you know, though, the research shows now 65% of sit-down restaurant uh, diners always tip down from 77% yeah. four years ago. Yeah. So you're getting to the point well, where roughly 35% to 40% of the people that you serve, if you are, if, if you're, uh, you know, uh, a server, aren't tipping. And that's likely because the restaurant costs, the menu prices have yeah, gone have up. Have gone up, yeah. You're right. Don't no, they have and gone so, up? Right? And, and, and people, so, and and so they're kind of factoring that in. And that's whether it's protest, affordability, or whatever it is. I'm guessing that's a big player in that in that regard. Here's what I don't like: walking up to and there's a fast food place that does this, and you have your own. You so you're at the counter, you're ordering something. And then you swipe your card right there. And then it says, how much would you like to tip for what? Yeah, exactly. I know. Because yeah, that know. is not part no. of the whole tipping no, thing. No, it's not. It's not. No, it isn't. You're right. And no, you're not. It's not. here's the difference. A drive through at, like, uh, Starbucks, tipping a barista is common when you go inside, right? You tip a barista. You, you put a... A dollar in, an extra dollar in for your drink. You know, only that's, if only that's if common. I only if I get into a race discussion. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> only if they'll agree to talk race with me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> or any other political issue. Uh, yeah. No. It's that's kind of commonplace. I won't say everybody does it, but it's commonplace to tip a barista. And so, if I go through the drive-through now that they have the thing where when they they bring out the electronic thing. And it says, it's going to ask you, and they say this way, it's going to ask you a question first. What they should say, if they're going to be completely blunt about it, is, hey, it's going to ask you if you want a tip. And it's, the other day I saw it, it's either, it's $2, $5, whatever. I don't have a problem tipping if I was normally going to tip if I go inside. I don't have problem tipping at the drive through But in a situation like it's a fast food restaurant, there's never been a, a tipping equation in 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 that mm-hmm. scenario. So when they say, "Would here it's it's asking you if you want a tip," why? Well, it's interesting because growing up in Western New York, you'll have a Tim Hortons where there's no tipping, and then right next door, Starbucks where you tip. Right. Where are yeah. you going to go? Right. Well, <laughs> well, I like Tim Hortons coffee. Better. Uh, better. <laughs> I, I, you know, just preference. Uh, soon and, soon, and the, I soon also the like, kiosk will have a tip I jar. Also, I also like donuts. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but, the, you, but no, I mean, that's it. It's like, well, and that's it. What would my habit be if I were, if I went inside, what would my habit be? Well, you know, I sometimes I'll drop a buck in the tip jar. And so if that's in the equation and it comes up on the, the screen, all right, then we can have that conversation. But if I'm going to the counter and it's never been there before, and all of a sudden it is now. By the way, <laughs> business owners who also work the counter, it's a way to upsell your customer. But they also have a tip jar on the counter. I saw that at a uh, pastry place uh, recently, and I'm like, all right, but they have a tip jar on the counter. So, you know, for the cash customers. That then that makes sense in that equation. Hey, do you want to tip, you know, the the entire group of people working there? Is it is it part of that equation naturally? Then you can have that discussion. Eight six six ninety red eye. Coming up, more with Gary McNamara and Eric Harley. It's Red Eye Radio. It's Friday Radio. He's Eric Carly, and I'm Gary McNamara. You know, one more uh, other thing, because I was talking about my 
a buddy of mine who's retired, and he's not like a full-time Uber driver, but he just does it once in a while, and he did 30 rides the other day. He did 15 in one day, 15 in another. I think it was uh, sometime during the week last week. And he said, I just did it for the heck of it, and he said, I found out how bad the economy is, and he mm-hmm. said, two mm-hmm. tips in 30 trips. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, I said, I just wonder whether a lot of young people are giving up their cars, not buying a car. And initially on, they thought Uber could be a great you know, thing. And then Uber's prices slowly have gone up. Sure. Yeah. And so they look at it. Now it's become, well, I can't, you know, I can't afford this every time. I can't afford to be tipping. Right. Sorry, yeah. it's a $30 ride. That's good enough. Well, and, you know, I, I'll say this. Um not because I might have to tip, but because things have become more expensive, I make different choices. I mean, I I think to myself, no, a turkey sandwich out of the fridge sounds good right now rather than uh, ordering something and, you know, and, and I think everybody has. We've talked about the way that inflation is, is that it impacts everyone. It's just that, you know, to what degree does it impact when it is – relentless like it has been in recent years there was no way it was going to have a greater impact that's just the measurement of the numbers and and that's what i wonder now because i i I viewed that as is that a microcosm of what's going on in the economy yeah uh right now i mean Mm -hmm. has the money run out has the credit run out and now yeah we're going to see uh, you know, because I did, uh, did we? Did I do it when you were here? When you were gone, when we did hmm. that, what they were looking for on the, the Western nations, the uh, the uh, um, oh the uh, oh, what do they call it? Like the G seven or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be like only 07 percent growth this year and negative growth next year. Yeah, and right. so it's like you're looking, going, okay, could this be a? Is this a long term now? Uh, minor recession that we're slow going boil to, recession. Yes, yeah, slow boil recession, and you yeah. coming back from right. the truck show saying, mm, you know. Well, I mean, it's things. look the the trucking economy we uh, we've been watching for uh, forever on the on the show, but with rates plummeting here recently, this just seems different, and the turnaround doesn't seem to be happening. to Red Eye Radio from the Uniden America Studios. And he's Eric Curley and I'm Gary McNamara. Download our Red Eye Radio app today. Listen when and where you want if you can't listen live overnight. All right, so I'm just reading this here. Oh, man, I just, Mm. I knew this would, I figured this would be by the end of the week, but it's now. It uh, came out already this weekend. Is the time right for a third-party candidate? Okay. All right. Because of the situation that Trump is in and Here we now go. Biden. Here we go. And, you know, I think, and this is, uh, uh, Douglas Schoen wrote this. Uh, uh, I believe he was a, uh, he's a Democratic pollster, mm. Democratic advisor. Mm. And, and he has pointed out the problems with uh, Democrats before. Yeah, okay. I'll just, yeah. I mean, the times he is, I, I, I call him as being intellectually honest at least. Right. So uh, I can sort of deal with him, but this is pretty interesting because he's talking about Cornell West getting in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Saying, you know, he's not a Ralph Nader. He's going to be loud. <laughs> so, I, mean, yeah, well. I told you already what he said that um, uh, Biden's got to get off the crack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or the crack pipe, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And um, they're saying that, you know, there's relatively strong you know, polling performance of Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who reached 20% in recent polling. Hmm. And it's like, you know, you look at somebody like Cornell West in a general election could pull off three to 5% of the election, of you know, from Democrats. Yeah, right. And it's like, well, we may need another party. What about the no labels party? Okay. Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, who do they, uh, you know, who, who do they, who do they pick? Uh, you know, uh, but, uh, 
the uh, you know you you look at you know, and he he talks about how he's been involved before in independent uh, campaigns. But, you know, we've talked about the no labels party or whatever. And what's the other one? The forward party. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, well, they sound like they're liberal to me. Yeah. It was interesting because he said, well, maybe one of those parties, it could be uh, Joe Manchin. But really nobody yeah. in the Democratic Party likes him. So since the Democratic Party makes up a significant portion of both of those parties. <laughs> yeah. They, they might not they might not want Manchin, but uh, it's just uh, I, I have. Look, I have no idea what's what's going to happen, but if but if you look at what will happen, Trump will be uh, arraigned tomorrow. Yeah. Right, After yeah. he is arraigned, you're going to hear the Republicans screaming about Biden now and the bribes, and there is going to be a push to get Comer to have you know it's we we've got to get this done. We can't let this wait. They could let it wait. It's just in the. Yeah insanity of what's going on right now mm. there's almost this knee-jerk reaction if they're getting trump we got to get biden now no matter what we have yeah right and i don't know if comer is thinking that way if comer's thinking the way of wait a minute let's um let's let's get it where we've got all of our ducks in a row you know let's yeah, make sure yeah. that if we get biden let's make sure we get him uh but the hearings i would see hearings Probably not over the summer, but in the fall. Yeah, I, I think you yeah. would, you probably would yeah. want you would want the hearings probably in September or or October, which would be the fact that this would be everybody testifying. You know, by that time, the whistleblower stuff, all of that, mm. everybody can testify. The whistleblowers can testify. Bob Ulinsky can testify. You can call Hunter Biden to testify. Mm-hmm. You make a big to do of it. But you you wait until everything with Trump settles down a little bit because it will, mm-hmm. just like it did last time. Mm-hmm. It settles down because there's really no news. Yeah, there's just, yeah. you know what new, and will Trump be doing interviews? Most likely, no. Will he be talking about the case with reporters, or will he be talking about it in any specific way at rallies? Don't know. I think the big thing for Trump is what happens to the big donors. That's something you and I have been talking about is uh, this primary season will be, this summer will be the beginning of where that money flow really starts to take shape. Uh, You can talk about who's got a war chest and who's got what on hand, and that's important. But the flow of the money between now and the fall is going to be important in measuring where the sentiment of those donors is, where the confidence of the donors is. And I think, again, you know, it could I don't have any predictions in that regard, but that's going to be your a very strong indicator. And then also, of course, the polling. The polling, if it starts to change between now and and the fall. Uh, and if Trump is dropping, then, you know, obviously uh, the others are going to see this as an advantage. Uh, and and we'll see where they go with their ads and, and how they target uh, their opponent, which would be Trump. Everybody below the, the, the top contender is going to you go after the top contender. That's how you do it. And we'll see if that, you know, if that plays out that way. If if his numbers are dropping significantly in the primary polls, then you'll see more of that. Um, it it really is. It, it's there are so many moving parts right now. It has a chaotic feel because there are so many different possibilities of how this goes, how this whole thing plays out. Um, in the legal cases, in the, I say cases because both sides are facing it, uh, the, and then the, the political effect of that, I, the political effect for Joe Biden, for his own party, by the way, really has little to do with the whole bribe thing. I mean, they don't like, uh, influence peddling. But honestly, for them, 
It's more about his incompetence. They don't have confidence in him from the beginning. So, you know, but the polls aren't going to be important because, as for now, until something changes, he's their guy. So you watch the primary polls on the right, and if, if Trump starts losing, you know, some numbers here in a significant way, then that will be very telling. And also, where are the donors? I think the donors right now, uh, there were, you know, there was a lot of this waiting game. Is is, is DeSantis going to get in? Is, you know, who else might get in? And honestly, right now, it's down to those two. But Trump still towers in the polls. And we'll see if that remains. If that remains the case, and the, and the, and the fundraising, is still there. His fundraising game is still there. Wow. That that actually brings more of an unpredictable nature to the whole thing. The left wants Trump to be the nominee because they believe that Biden can beat him again. I don't know that, actually. <laughs> well, I mean, you have, I mean, I will say this. If Trump does run and Biden stays in, mm -hmm. it's no longer... A election on any issue at all. Nope. Nope. The only it issue it is, is the two tier justice system. Mm -hmm. That's yep. what it's about. Yep. Uh, reading, reading here though, cause I was talking about uh, Douglas Schoen's column here. Just listen to this because this is just, this is where I look at somebody like Douglas Schoen at times he gives good analysis and sometimes it's just pure manure. Yeah. <clears throat> Talked about the no labels party. Mm. The no labels offers a more difficult choice. This is if there's going to be a third you know, third-party candidate. Yeah, right. As we sit here today, they have no clear and obvious candidate, although Senator Joe Manchin is the most visible, credible, and seemingly interested potential candidate. However, Manchin is 75 years old. He has largely but not totally supported Democratic uh, policies. And a memo by Third Way, a Democratic activist group, echoed the fears of many mainstream Democrat groups that a Manchin candidacy, even if he runs against both parties and against both the former and current president, should they be the nominees, could further tip the election to the Republicans. Of course, it's not yet certain what a Manchin candidacy would do if he were, in fact, to run. Recent polls in West Virginia show him trailing the state's current governor, uh, uh, Republican Jim Justice, by 20 or more points on a potential Senate re-election battle. So it's likely that the increasingly Republican composition of West Virginia, a state which Donald Trump won by 40 points, in 2020 makes Manchin's candidacy for re-election increasingly unlikely. Manchin would presumably seek a Republican running mate. The most obvious choice would be... Mm -hmm. Who do you think he... Who Manchin would pick? Yes. A, a Republican running mate. The most obvious one would be... Mitt Romney? Liz Cheney. <laughs> okay. All right. That's where I just. Yeah, that's, I, was, I was picking from the same pool, but yeah, right. But okay. when he when he, yeah. he he said Liz Cheney, I go, you've lost all credibility. Yeah, there's yeah, not no, going to be Liz a mansion Liz Cheney ticket. Horrible choice. The disaffected Republican who lost her House seat in Wyoming due to, to her advocacy of the work on the House January 6th Commission and her strident opposition to Trump. To be sure, Cheney's appeal would be mostly to moderate and conservative Democrats. Uh -huh. There are no conservative Democrats. No, there are not. And you think that the, you think Democrats, any Democrat would really vote for Liz Cheney? No, no, no. She was useful on yes. the whole January 6th thing. She's not any longer useful to them. He goes, yet there is an argument, which I think is a fair one, that a Manchin Cheney ticket would offer the first authentic oh, bipartisan, credible alternatives to the American oh, people credible. since Ross Perot's path breaking candidacy credible? in 1992. Credible? I am not going to tip him on this. <laughs> he gets no tip. He gets zero dollars in, in no. tip. <laughs> I'm not tipping. When on did this he one. write this? He wrote this Friday night. I mean, just wonder if there were. A, yeah, incredible. Were there a few, Give me a break. A few cocktails no, no. involved. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did Iggy? Did, did Is he Iggy smoking Dan, weed? Did Iggy Danchenko help <laughs> yeah, him out in right. writing this? I okay. Right. Come on. I mean, what are we going to do? Oh, well, that's that. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm you know what? Mansion and Cheney, that's it. That's the ticket. You know what? You know what? You know yeah, what? Yeah, that's Listen, hey, you know, I got it. 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 
<laughs> Mansion <laughs> Shaney. Shaney. Go home, you're drunk. <laughs> uh, now, I don't have any doubt that Mansion and Shaney think that way, think that they could uh, pose as or position themselves as, you know, the, the, the great centered party or whatever, however you want to hogwash this whole thing. I, from their perspective, they might try and pass that on uh, or, or, or get a, a, a try and sell that to you. But no, it's not going to be sold to the American people. It's not going to happen. It just isn't. I have great concerns uh, within the Republican Party. A number of them we have over the years. Uh, and that's always likely going to be the case. Uh, Democrats, oh my gosh. I mean, seriously, we can, we, <laughs> the the list is ever growing. But this idea, I'm not saying a, a there won't be another Ross Perot mo- moment somewhere. There might be. But it's not going to be Manchin or Cheney. It's just not. And the reason is, is because. If you look at Ross Perot and the way, you know, he kind of walked into that, uh, you know, look, we picked apart a number of things, you know, back and back since then. And and I think probably back then that we were thinking, even though we might not have been on this program doing that, a lot of people picked apart his ideas that he was floating going, you know, that's not going to work. This is going to work. There was an appeal there, though, and he had not. Uh, exactly set the tone by years of service in office like a mansion and a Liz Cheney. They bring a great deal of baggage to the table and could there, but could there be a third party candidate that makes some noise and makes a splash like a Ross Perot at some point? I leave open that possibility. Yeah. Maybe I remember when I was against Ross Perot on, mm-hmm. Fifty cent That's uh, a gallon. Exactly to, what I was thinking. To, to uh, you know, yep. on on gasoline yep. to to uh, to pay the, to uh, to pay off the debt. Right. Well, yeah, you're going to raise it fifty cents, and then Democrats aren't going to allow you to do that in the '90s, and right. so you're yeah. you make a deal with them, and yeah. they don't fulfill the deal not to raise tax or right. not to not to spend more. Right. Eight six six ninety red eye. Lines open for your calls. Eight six six ninety red eye on Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Harley, and uh, I'm Gary McNamara. Latest on Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, the uh, the the bribe document, uh, and a whole bunch more because that's going to heat up now this week. I mean, yeah. after especially yeah. after tomorrow, after Trump is indicted, you're not going to hear much about that no, because there's right. not not much going on, and there won't I be don't, something happening every day. I'd be very surprised if Trump does any interviews, mm, yeah, at all on it, and right. so. It's going to be the Republicans, I guarantee, want to make a ton of noise this week on the whole Joe Biden bribe document. Yeah. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now. It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across the USA and around the planet Earth, we are Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. Hey, whatever happened, were you, were you here when the... Uh, Alien story came out? Which alien story? The, the one about the, the nine foot, ten foot alien in the backyard? Oh, no, no there's that one too. There's. <laughs> <laughs> no, the one, remember the one researcher came out 
and said aliens are definitely uh, are, are here and they're here now. But then then that story came out about the, the Vegas thing back on April 30th. Yeah. Where the people saw the eight-foot things right. in their backyard. Which went viral over the last four or five days yes. for some reason yes. all over again. Yeah. But why why weren't there any pictures? First thing I thought of is... Yeah. It, it, I'm it taking was, a picture of the aliens. Because it... There's no way I'm not. Yes. I we got a picture we got a picture of what you had for breakfast and you didn't get one of a 10-foot alien in your backyard? backyard? Well, it just it wasn't what it was, it was I was so shocked I couldn't Yeah. You called Sorry. 911. It didn't Yeah. You don't have you don't there are no pictures. What do you mean? The instinct is to take the picture before you call the cops. Yes. Right. Exactly. I want evidence because my my thinking is if I'm uh, I'm gonna I don't know who I'd call by the way. It, Me, Gary. There's an alien outside my mm, window, and you would. I'm tell, sending you a picture. I know, I know what you would say. We're not going to do this. We're not George Nori. <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> We're not doing this. We're not going down that road, man. We're going to do what we do. We're not doing this. All right, then fine. Find out the if aliens are on the planet Earth, uh -huh. are they liberal or conservative? <laughs> See, this is how we can deal with this. Well, that's the it, first thing I'd want to, and the reason I'd have pictures is because I want evidence not of that the alien exists. Uh, I want evidence that he told me he's a conservative. I'd film it because I'm going to interview him. <laughs> <laughs> you, it would. It, there's no way I'm not reaching for my phone in that moment. There's no way I'm not reaching for every recording device I can find. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm turning on my security cameras. I mean, they would probably be rolling anyway. That's another thing. Nothing. Yeah, that's there's the first thing. Nothing. Well, I. Forgot what newspaper I first saw it in. They had like some photos, but none of the photos were of an alien. I mean, and I right, when right. I looked at the, the picture the, on my phone, it was like dark. I'm like, is there an alien? Okay, the, that's the flash in the sky thing. Yeah, this is a flash in the sky. No, no, I want oh, the I want the alien. I've seen flashes in the sky. That time the cops were hunting me down with a helicopter. I, I saw the flash in the sky. I saw I've a lot of them before. last night driving into work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. It looked really, it really like, impressive. And it seemed like they were all going to the same location. <laughs> well, it did seem like I, I didn't see any lightning bolts. All mm. I saw was when you see, you know, in the in mm. those huge, uh, you know, cumulus clouds and, and, you, and they're, they're all just lighting up, mm -hmm. sort of like Independence Day when it comes mm -hmm. through. Yeah. 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 What's behind the cloud? Yeah. Is that lightning or is it something else? I was thinking of the airport. Um <laughs> Got an airport just a few minutes from here. Oh, look, they're all headed in the same direction. It must be a convention of the, um, it just boggles my mind. It, it, you're, you're, you got an eight to 10 foot alien. <laughs> and you, you, you don't think to pick up a camera. First thing I thought, it's like I was like, "Oh, it's their pictures finally!" Well, Which, after the whole uh, tick tac, and I and no, I don't mean tick tock. The tick tac alien video thing from the Navy, all that yes stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How are we not better prepared? This has been the problem all along. Every person who has a phone has a camera mm -hmm. and still nothing i'm not saying they don't exist i'm saying you're saying you got a 10-foot alien in your backyard and you don't know how to operate a camera look and, and i'm looking at it right now i just happened to go I just, I'm, I'm on fox news mm -hmm. and right there tom brady knocks a drone out of the air with a football yeah. on his first try and there's a clear picture and video of that yes Right. Exactly. <laughs> if a celebrity is drinking coffee in a cafe, we can get nine million shots of it. <laughs> 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 
creatures from other being or, or things from other planets are here on our planet. And not just that. I mean, they're eight to ten feet tall. This could solve the crisis of the WNBA. Oh, How many great players might there be in the alien community where we could open it up a little bit and have some tryouts? Now, here's the question. If they played basketball, would they even have to touch the ball? Wait a minute, though. Huh? Aren't the aliens, like, sexless? Well, Aren't they the sexless? left is okay with that. If they're gender fluid, all the more reason. That's my whole point. I mean... Uh, I, maybe I'm getting my information from the X Files, <laughs> which probably isn't the most it's reliable, so sci- scientific, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, TV show to to uh, well, to, it's to not get that it from. It's but not I thought, accurate. It's just not up, updated I, 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 to today's I, I, okay, I just, standard on the left. You at, know? W- at one point, weren't they asexual? I mean, I I always wasn't that the point. Of... I it's none of my business. <laughs> No, they were, and, and and maybe that's why we, they were so interested who? and ha- so heavy into probing. I, I accept them for the beings that they are. <laughs> I, I'm. Oh my! You know, oh. I, I, that's the that's the libertarian in me. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you got a ten foot alien in your backyard, and you don't record it. You don't have any cameras anywhere. You don't have. Then it didn't happen. You know, the first thing is, hmm. I mean, it was. Uh, by the time I heard the eight foot alien story, mm-hmm. probably was Wednesday or Thursday, and yeah, was all this stuff was you know yeah. about Trump was breaking and all the you know about Biden and right. everything else and. I saw the story and I go, I hope this is true. Just a refreshing change of pace. Well, I wasn't thinking of the actual implications here's, for the world. If, but if, here's if the aliens are showing themselves no, now, it's like no, you bring it, up a great. You it's bring a refresh, up a refreshing story. You bring up a great point. Who was it? Uh, Nate Bargatze, not on his latest special, but the one before that, uh, the the uh, greatest average American, which was recorded during. They shot it during COVID. So his audience, they were all at separate tables, six mm-hmm. feet apart, and they were wearing masks, but it was still very funny. But he says, here we are. We've proven that aliens exist, and it's not even the story anymore. You know, and th- th- this is how crazy <laughs> the world is. And it probably is true. And it's it's like we could go to the store tomorrow. A 10-foot alien is over in the, you know, over in the produce section, and, and it's like, that's not the craziest thing going on right now. <laughs> Sorry. I did have my camera. I just didn't care to – it wasn't a big deal. I actually didn't call because it was an alien. I called because he was intruding into my backyard. That's the only reason I called 911. The fact that it's an alien, that's not the biggest deal. That's, that's how chaotic it is. That's how crazy the world is. But seriously, turn your cameras on. And could we get? I just got a new phone recently. Camera, the the, the camera is is uh, fabulous. It's it's great. It's much better. Big good because I'm getting that same phone. I believe this from. Yeah, yeah. I think my wife is too. Um, and it's you know it's great. Uh how many how many lenses? What five operative lenses back here? This could be designed by aliens. That could, pick like. a, that could pick up an alien right yeah. away. Oh, yeah. No, I can. I, in fact, I can, with this camera, I can get a good shot of them on their planet <laughs> from here. <laughs> and we can't get, it's in your backyard. You didn't get anything. You got nothing. Keep, keep a 10-year-old kid with you. That's my suggestion. If you're going to be an adult <laughs> that is going to, you know, and you think maybe you might possibly run into a an alien a 10-foot alien in your backyard uh have one of the kids recorded for you they can operate these phones like nobody's business they're they're very fluent in all that techno all the technology 
and they'll get a good shot of the alien. So uh, do that to our uh, uh, great listeners. Uh, <clears throat> your homework is if aliens do exist after that story next week mm. and have visited the planet Earth, are mm. they liberal or conservative? That's all we want to know. When the X-Files was on, mm. I, I must have been, okay, when the X-Files first started, I was doing my radio show in Buffalo. Yeah. And I actually did that as a show one day right. for an hour. I right. just did it. I'm kidding. And the phones rang like crazy. Mm. They're conservative because now nah, they're liberal because of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> all, all of their environmental stuff backfired and they destroyed their planet with all the environmental crap. So they came here. Right. And it was just so, you know, it was just, well, what about are they fiscal conservatives? You know, it's like, right. Do they practice capitalism or communism? Can you actually practice communism and be the first to be able to go to a different solar system? Or do you have to be capitalist in order to do that, like the moon landing? I mean, it got to be just, yeah. it, it got to be bizarre. At the end of it, I was like, I have no idea. Where do we start this and where are we now? <laughs> exactly. No, I mean, it's it it's, just, it's all over the place. But I do done. believe that the world is in such, not the world, but, but in, in, you know, just the, the chatter, uh, social media world, I guess. There's so much chaos going on all the time. It's like, uh, anyone see this eight-foot alien standing over here? Yeah, but did you hear what happened the other day with, I mean, <laughs> with, with it's, Trump? Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. <laughs> That's out of this world. No, I have literally somebody from out of this world standing right in front of me. And Ask it, him what he thinks about the and, Trump thing. And that story was so funny because, like, the, the cops saying, no, the people were really scared. They're really scared. I mean, they had us scared. We were thinking we saw the thing go through the sky. And next thing we know, there's eight foot you know, they're yeah. talking about the dispatch, dispatchers and stuff. Right, and yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. talking about it. And I'm like, yeah. this is really intense. And it was like 30 seconds later, it's like, okay, what's going on with Biden? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the, like, <laughs> wow, this Biden stuff is crazy. These aliens, they just stood there. They didn't communicate. Yeah. Well, they're not really interesting. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Boring. Yeah, of course, we all know about aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they kidnap Britney Spears? Right. Well, right. then we don't care. Are they for or against vaccines? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I mean, seriously. It's... All right. I did, uh, I did see this the other day. What did you see? Uh, in my local park. Mm. It was like five people walking together. Yeah. Outside. Yeah. All masked. Oh, no, 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 no. I Young saw a people, lot of it uh, while yeah. I was traveling. A lot while this I was, was traveling. This was outside in a mm -hmm. park, though. They weren't yeah. going into a building. They were just No, walking. no, no. I saw it outside. And let's say very yeah. wide open spaces. And they were all paper masks. They weren't the, you know. Um, that, yeah. I don't recall if if that one person that I, that I watched, that it was all day, though, that this person was wearing a mask. Yeah, because I have some from the way back when I... Mm -hmm. Have some still in the original pack at the what are the mm -hmm. N95s or mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they weren't they you know yeah you can tell the difference between that now, and the regular at the airports I saw it but usually it's elderly people wearing masks and stuff like that and I'm like okay you know I get it I guess that's fine um, I'm not sure how effective it is but that's up to them if they want to wear a mask they can wear a mask whatever. oh and the White House is doing it now mm -hmm. you saw that They're what's going that back. the, They're going the back mask masks and oh. social distancing yeah. the White House is going back to it. like yeah for some something coming up it's like. Why? 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 Are, are they like, <laughs> are they greatly concerned about the? I mean, everybody should be concerned about the health of any president. But I mean, is there something mm -hmm. in particular going on right now with the president that's causing that? Eight six six ninety red eye. Hi, I'm Jen Loomis, a transport safety expert at JJ Keller, and I'm here to share a tip on compliance, safety, accountability. Compliance, safety, accountability, or CSA is the FMCSA Safety Compliance and Enforcement Program. Its goal is to hold motor carriers and drivers accountable for highway safety and to reduce crashes, injuries, and fatalities on our roads. CSA does this by assessing the safety performance of motor carriers and drivers based on data collected during roadside inspections, crash reports, and FMCSA investigations. Based on the data that is compiled, motor carriers are assigned a score. The carrier is then grouped with other carriers who have had a similar number of safety events. Carrier scores within the group are then ranked to determine intervention priority. Low scores are better, so carriers with the highest scores are those that are most likely to be targeted for intervention by the FMCSA. Interventions range in severity and may include warning letters, roadside, off-site, or on-site inspections, 
civil penalties, or operation out of service orders. This tip was brought to you by J.J. Keller and Associates. Visit us at jjkeller.com. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. So what is going to happen is, you know, Trump uh, faces arraignment tomorrow, and then we basically know, you know, what's in the indictment. And yeah. that's been gone over for the last five days. Right. And I believe that, in, that the Republicans are, if you're just wondering what might be happening in the next couple of weeks, Republicans are going to get loud about Biden and the bribe. Yeah, they're going to get yeah. real. They're really going to get loud. I, I believe on this. The American public already knows, but the fact is, I think you're going to hear more of of that. I think you're going to hear a lot of the two tier justice system. I don't know what you're going to hear. I I think there may be there may be some sober analysis about the actual charges and the seriousness of the charges against Trump. Right. I do think that may take a couple of weeks yeah. for that yeah. to settle in. Right. But you can be the most loyal Trump supporter on the planet. And if you're looking at this, uh, at the, the actual things that he did, mm -hmm. Trump did, to make things worse, you just have to shake your head and say, what the hell's in his mind? Yeah. Because yeah. why would right. he do if, it's, uh, if all these things are true? Mm-hmm. And if they're not true and they're making them up, then the uh, the prosecutors are in some big, big trouble. But the 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 stuff of him having the defense intelligence on, you know, attacking Iran and mm -hmm. showing it to a writer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the author. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the the author and three mm -hmm. other people, and then mm -hmm. talking about the fact that it's classified. It could be declassified, but we never yeah. declassified it. Totally the opposite of what he said. None of this is good. And you no. can talk about the two-tier justice system and everything else. But in this particular case here, there's a possibility that a jury will convict. Yeah, um, I, I think there's that. And, and I also think, too, that it has the, uh, the potential to erode uh, and, and be, you know, again, one more thing in the mind of the voter in a primary mm -hmm. season. I could be totally wrong about that, and it could be something where this case uh, blossoms into uh, something that leverages him and and his numbers even improve. Uh, we'll see in the end, but I think it also has that potential of people going, "All right, come on, that doesn't make this doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense," and that is a big deal when there's a pattern of that kind of behavior. And it it is just the words, it is just this, but it's like. All right, can you stay focused? Can you be focused? And that's what voters consider. That's the way the political game works, and we are in a primary season. We'll see which way that goes. On your smart speaker, say, play Red Eye Radio. And if you're really nice, she might. Red Eye Radio. And he's Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. So uh, I think after uh, uh, tomorrow, the Trump stuff, like it always does, because there's always stuff going on, will die down for a little bit. Mm. And I do think the Republicans are going to get loud on on uh, on Biden. This was, uh, this was written by uh, Miranda Devine, who wrote the... Uh, uh, I'm getting the books mix, mixed up now. Um, oh, laptop the, from hell. Laptop from hell. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Uh, but she said if uh, if Biden special counsel Robert Hur is doing his job as ruthlessly as is his Trump counterpart Jack Smith, then he should be looking at links between the president's alleged mishandling of classified documents and allegations Biden 
and his son took $5 million bribes in Ukraine. At least one email from Hunter Biden's laptop during his father's vice presidency stands out as worthy of her scrutiny to determine if there is any overlap with classified documents found in Joe Biden's Delaware home or various offices. Hunter uh, refers to my uh, my guy's upcoming travels in his business uh, in, in his email to his business partner, Devin Archer, dated April 13, 2004, one week before Joe visited Ukraine as vice president. It was an uncharacteristically sophisticated email mm. listing 22 points about Ukraine's political situation with detailed analysis of the upcoming election and anticipating the escalation of the Russia's destabilization campaign. It is unlike anything else ever written by Hunter in the thousands of documents during the nine years covered in the laptop. Mm. The email has a distinct flavor of an official briefing or perhaps even a classified one, and that's what Comer was on a couple of weeks ago. Right. On that. Mm. And so... Uh, the Ukraine, the, this, listen to this. They actually analyzed it. The Ukraine email is found to be written by someone with an estimated IQ of 120 compared to other t- emails, text messages, and notes, which have an IQ level no greater than 106, according to analysis by the nonprofit Marco Polo, which has just published a website of photos of Hunter's laptop, an IQ of 100. By the way, I... I wouldn't have put this in my article. Yeah. yeah I, I would it, not have put this in my article. It, I, I, it doesn't really have yeah, that. Yeah. Right. It doesn't. I, I see ha- what you mean. You know, and, you know, they're saying, well, it doesn't, you know, the IQ of 120 and 106. And, I mean, what would, to none of this can hold up in court at whatsoever. It, right. Uh, it and, doesn't serve right. that that long-term right. purpose. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the uh, text messages and notes, which have an IQ level no greater than 106, according to the analysis uh, publisher, an IQ of I, uh, 120 is classed as a uh, very superior intelligence and would place a person in the top 9% of smart people in the world while an IQ of 106 is average. Mm. I remember one time, I forgot whether it's junior high or high school, mm. I saw my IQ. Yeah. I have no idea whether it's bogus or not. I don't have any idea. You know, going back as long as you'd have to go back then to figure it out, the late 60s, if mm-hmm. that is, you know, what you know at that time but, but it was a 116 mm-hmm. so yeah i i don't i guess that means sort of smart or i don't know i mine was 141 i don't even know if it's accurate was it really 141 yeah that's super intelligent that's like genius see i read where it's where you like 160 is super intelligent that 141 okay. is smart Again, I don't even know. Well, then definitely the IQ does not have any credibility if you have a 140 and I only have a 116. Oh, yeah, it does. (laughs) That's the only reason that I said it. Yeah, I don't know if 141 is accurate. Mine's bigger than yours. Well, well, but here's (laughs) (laughs) Look, mine's the equivalent of a shoe size. Um, No, I, I, there are days when I think, you know, oh, I'd like to have it. Retest it. I'd like to go through that process, and then I think, ah, uh, not today. <laughs> this isn't a good day. This is not a good day. Um, yeah, I don't. I probably wouldn't have put that in the article. It doesn't serve the long term game on it. No, it does. I, I neither, neither would I. I mean, I, I might, I might joke about it, mm. but I don't know who this organization is, and the organization is one who has. Uh, you know, uh, an organization that has, you know, uh, uh, put out a lot of Hunter's pictures. Well, yeah. who are they? Who, who did the IQ test? I mean, mm-hmm. I, there's if you're going to do that, you better reference it in, in an article. Miranda Devine, you're better than that. You would reference it. You wrote the book. Yeah, right. But yeah, uh, yeah, when yeah. I, I saw that, I'm like, okay, you got to reference this better. Uh, but um, then her other article, Biden laughs off FBI bribery claims mm. as evidence against him and Hunter mounts. And it is. It's just getting it's getting worse and worse right. each and every week. And it's only going in one direction. And this thing, you know, when you compare and we said this earlier, uh, when you compare the allegations of Biden, if true, mm-hmm. compared to those against Trump. 
We're not even in the same ballpark because you're talking about a sitting president who may be compromised with foreign governments, and he's president of the United States. Mm -hmm. An ex-president, yeah. for whatever reason, bragging, bragging negotiation. To an author or uh, showing uh, something or saying yeah. something stupid or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where there is no evidence that he is involved in any type of of bribe, foreign government, mm -hmm. maybe stupidity mm -hmm. for doing what he did at that point, but you cannot find any type of crime or any type of, uh, in, in uh, quotes, treasonous mm -hmm. actions, mm -hmm. end of quote, mm -hmm. uh, the number one story is the Biden story. Yeah. Yeah. By far. Yeah. Uh, no, because, that's, because that's it's about the immediate a threat yep. to a nation. Yep. Look, there are concerns uh, uh, with anyone who has that information sharing it with somebody who is not yes. authorized to see it. There are great concerns because the person who doesn't have that authority can then be targeted by foreign nations in order to extract any information and try and turn them as a spy or a witness or whatever. Those are your those. That's the threat. You you're not supposed to share it with somebody who was not authorized to see it. That is a threat. There is a much greater threat of a sitting president who has received money as a quid pro quo retainer. You're going to be in our pocket, and we're going to keep you there while you're in the White House. Because if that's going on, then he has to be removed as president. He has to be removed from office. He can no longer be president. Yeah. And even if he's not compromised now, he has to be removed from office because right. he has shown he has been compromised. Right. That's it. And, I mean, right. if there is... If there is no action that you can see that was a return on that quid uh, uh, pro quo for for Burisma or or any foreign nation or any anybody involved. Uh, you still he is willing. To, he was willing to do that and would be open to it. There is again, it's it is a standing situation. It is an existing situation, and it is a threat to national security at the greatest level. I wouldn't be surprised if starting this September and October is when you, the Republicans in Comer start start holding hearings, mm -hmm. because I do think that once the you know once this you know because uh, as we saw in the one case with the Bragg case, that that's not going to go anywhere because even if they found him guilty, that'd be thrown out of court, right? Uh, without question, right? Uh, that one that's that one's not going to go anywhere, mm -hmm. but you still aren't going to hear much of that because. I don't even know when the next time he's supposed to be in court for that. And this mm -hmm. one, the arraignment will happen, and they may say, okay, in six months we do something. Yeah, right, yeah. And and so you're going to have plenty of time where it's only Biden to look at for the Republicans. I think the Republicans know that, and I think that if you're going to hit Biden politically, you start in September. You get all your ducks in a row. You get as much evidence as you possibly can. You get the witnesses like Bob Ulinsky, who are going to testify. You get Hunter Biden to testify. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and depending on what you know, mm. you know, you see if you can get, you know, I, I don't know if you can get the head of Burisma uh, there, but, you know, at that point you get the informant. Yeah. You get the whistleblower, you right. get the informant, you right. get everybody to testify, you know, at that point. People say, well, the media won't cover it. Doesn't matter. Mm. The people in the United States already the majority already believe it. Right. So they know. They yep. know. Yep. It's not traditional where people just watch TV anymore. They watch YouTube. They yep. get it on their own time. Yeah, well they're const but, everybody's yeah. constantly being bombarded yep. by can't. these by these stories. And and I think that's what's going to happen because I think the Republicans are looking at this going, "Okay, uh, uh Trump may be damaged." Yeah. We don't know. Right. Yeah. Trump may be damaged, but the fact is let this thing go through the summer. You know, every just you know everybody does what they do during the summer. They go back to their districts. Come in September when we're back again, it's when we start because Comer doesn't have to stop the investigation that right. he's doing right, right now, right. and the investigators uh, don't have to stop 
they're investigating either. But uh, you bring, um, you know, who knows what's going to happen in this? I mean, the thing is, though, has the we don't know. Did the FBI investigate any of this? I don't know. Well, again, I don't uh, know if the FBI investigated any of this. I mean, past, you know, Bill Barr. Right. You know, yeah, when, when yeah, he was gone yeah, and they gave yeah. it to the the uh, the federal attorney. Right. Did the FBI actually look into this? Did he look into it? Did they just let it sit? Has this thing been sitting around? There's so much information that's going to come out on all of this, and none of it looks good. Where's the IG at the yeah. FBI? Where, where Where's the investigation at the FBI? You know, all these are very pertinent questions. And what other witness or, gosh, uh, whistleblower might come to the surface? There's no telling. There really is no telling. If it's real, if it is true, then there are there, there's a great number of people right now, and I, I mean a significant number of players here that are aware that it is true, that it happened, and it's only a matter of time before somebody else would talk if there's not already an investigation or something heading in that direction. I remember Michael Horowitz is still the inspector yes, general of the yes. DOJ. Yes, so, he is. Uh, so, and this has been our question. Yeah. Where, where is he on that? Mm-hmm. What happened with that was with the whistleblower situation and, and how was that handled? Um, there are some certain things the IG's office is not going to be a part of, but since there are whistleblowers on multiple levels in the whole Biden thing, then now we, the IG is a part of it. So where is there a report? Uh, is there something? And what else might Congress do to get that information uh, known? 866-90-RED-EYE. We'll be right back with more Red Eye Radio with Eric Harley and Gary McNamara. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Harley, and I'm Gary McNamara. So, yeah, I would expect that uh, you would see hearings this fall as you, uh, you know, really lead into the election because that's when things yeah. really get moving. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. I think August there's a uh, August there's a debate, then some, then probably September. Every month there'll probably be a debate. Right. You know, for the Republicans will be having it, so yeah. it'll be in the news. It'll be in the news how Biden is not, mm-hmm. and I think the Republicans want. I, I think actually the Republicans look at it and say, well, if you don't have a debate, well, then nobody's challenging him. So it's just him. So drip, 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 right, drip. Right, right. And I think that um, I would expect hearings because uh, you want the you want the political part of it. You want to see Hunter Biden yeah. on the stand. Yeah. You want to see Bob Yulinski on the stand. Mm-hmm. You want to see other of the business people that actually worked with Biden talking about it. And so, like I said, with the Trump thing, who knows, probably once he is, uh, you know, once the, the one, one thing about Trump, there's been so many things against him where people just go, oh, just another thing. But all yeah, of a sudden you yeah. get you get these are the bribery hearings of the current president. That's a different ball game. Yep completely different ball game yep. that moves to the top yep absolutely absolutely uh and uh, of course it would be i think more top of mind uh in the fall as you're gearing up for the beginning of the year and the yep. and, and the real uh heating up of the the uh, political back and forth that will be the 24 season uh and i you know I'm really curious to see if there's going to be anything else that rises to the surface. If there are any more whistleblowers, if there are any witnesses that would come forward uh, in this equation that are willing to testify, that are willing to, and beyond just the hearings, obviously, justice for it. Because, look, are they going to indict a sitting president? Uh, Likely, no, they're not going to. But could they remove a president if that mm-hmm. evidence rises to the surface? Yes, as they should.
This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One.